Hey guys, how's it going? And happy Friday. I hope all of you guys are doing good. So I had a lot of fun about a month ago doing kind of a just laid back Q&A hangout with you guys. So my last stream was about, are you an MVE? That's the new phrase right now in our community. And probably most of you, if not all of you are. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my live stream literally two days ago here on YouTube. I went over this FBI document. And now we had Senator Cruz grilling them. The United States Congress is grilling the FBI. But this is actually a legit FBI memo. And I thought to myself, I'm like, well, hold on a minute. So we could just sit here and cower and, and hide and, hmm. But if you remember, when this country was founded, Ben Franklin was asked, what kind of government do we have? Do we have a monarchy or a republic? And he said a republic, if you can keep it. And there's certain ways we need to keep this republic. Many, many things. And the purpose of these streams is for me to come on here, brainstorm with you all, motivate you, offer encouragement. Actually, I'm just providing a great place for a chat because you guys are all in here. Awesome people. I'm so lucky to get to hang out with you guys every Friday night. I hang out with a lot of you guys on Saturday nights on locals as well. And you guys are offering that for each other. So we need to keep encouraging each other. And we need to remember, Congress didn't grant us our rights. All men are created equal. And they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And among these, not limited to, but among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the government would be instituted among men. And literally the only reason this government exists at all is to protect your natural rights. And this is all part of that right now. Because people sit there and they say all these different things online. Well, let's just cut to the chase. People keep asking, are we going to have a civil war? Look, if you're still asking that, you're a little bit behind. You need to catch up. We are in a civil war right now. We're in a cultural civil war. And there's people literally just trying to destroy this country trying to destroy the founding documents, trying to destroy the ideals of what it means to be an American. And they're never, ever, ever going to stop until we say, no, enough's enough. We're done. We want to be Americans. We still believe in self-governance. We believe in a republic, and we're darn toot, and we're going to keep it. Now, the FBI would tell you that if you display certain symbols, and I'm wearing one right now on my hat, I've got one right back there on the wall, really big. I've got my stickers. And that might make me on the MVE list, right? This is called military violent extremists. And the notion that that means that you're violent or extreme because you believe in the history and the text of these United States of America. Because you believe that the First Amendment, very, very important, that's freedom of speech. Don't forget that. This is mainly a Second Amendment gun-related channel, and we're going to talk all about guns and the Second Amendment and ammo. I'm going to answer as many questions as I can in just a couple minutes and just hang out and just be friends. You know, we need each other right now. But I want us all to double down against this BS because the First Amendment's on the line right now. They're trying to make you scared to display your Don't Tread on Me flag, your Punisher skull, your Betsy Ross flag, anything. The, literally the letters, the word number and letter 2A right here. This will put you on a list, according to the FBI right now. If you talk about the Tree of Liberty, which is a real tree in Massachusetts that was a very important symbol of the colonists and the founding of America, of these United States of America. If you talk about people that the feds have murdered over the years, you're on the list. Stuff that I've talked about probably more than anybody on here. And I'm not going to stop. And you guys can't stop. Look, truth is treason in the empire of lies. And these are lies. And you need to reject lies. And these are evil. And evil is always going to prevail when good men do nothing. And we can't let evil prevail. We need to improve this country and make this a better place for ourselves, for our children, for our children's children. We literally all need to start planting a seedling, a little tree that we will never, ever, ever live long enough to see its shade. But there's beautiful people that will be born, our kids, our children's children. And they need us right now. 
a lot of people have been lazy too long in this country. You know, they say good times make weak men. When are people going to start getting that? We're not in good times anymore. If we just keep being weak and we just keep capitulating and giving up on the United States of America, we're going to lose it. And you ain't never, ever, ever going to get it back. Not in your lifetime, certainly. Unfortunately, not even in your children's lifetime and probably not in your grandchildren's or great grandchildren's lifetimes. I'm not saying that for doom and gloom. I'm actually like totally positive tonight and like super excited and lucky that I get to hang out with you guys. I'm offering that as encouragement. It's time we all grow a pair and we say, no, we're Americans. Enough's enough. We have freedom of speech that's protected by the First Amendment. And we do. And we have the right to speak out against our government and to peaceably assemble. We have the right to petition our government for a redress of grievance. That's literally what it means to be an American. And there's some people that reject that and are living here within our land that don't want to be Americans. Look, if you don't like the United States of America, you can move out. I ain't stopping you. But this is my country, dang it. And I'm not going to sit there and take off my 2A hat. In fact, I normally wear my landscaping shirts. And I just took the one off that I was cutting grass in 30 minutes ago. I got done cutting grass for the night. And I put on my 2A EDU shirt just to display loud and proud the 2A again. And I hope you guys are doing that. Put up your don't tread on me flag. If you're into the Punisher, put up your Punisher skull. The Betsy Ross flag. That doesn't make you a violent extremist. That just makes you an American. That's normal. And there's a lot of people lying to you right now. And there's a lot of people lying to the American people. But what it means to an American is to express yourself. Now, you don't have the right to take other people's rights away. You can't literally just do anything you want. But I don't think any of us want to hurt anybody anyways. We just want to be left alone. Just leave me alone. Here's the problem. They're never, ever, ever going to leave you alone. And the more scared you are of them, they sense that. They sense fear. They sense nervousness. And then they come faster and faster and faster. And you know how that snowball effect works once it starts coming down the mountain. I know some of you guys live out west. My my friend Bantock just showed a quick video short in the mountains somewhere near Colorado. I see you in there. Shout out to the Bantock channel, by the way. He's out there fighting it. He's not afraid to talk. He has a lot to lose, too. Well, the Founding Fathers had a lot to lose. And whatever, we, we just need to win at all costs. That's what the Founding Fathers said. Look, you go out in the snowy mountains and that snowball starts. It's really small at first. It's like this big and a two-year-old could stop it. Heck, if a little bunny rabbit sat in front of it, it would stop it, right? At that point. But as it rolls, it collects more and more snow. And the heavier it is, the laws of physics take effect. It's called gravity. And it starts rolling faster. And the faster it rolls, the quicker it can pick up more snow. And it gets bigger and faster and bigger and faster. And that's what I feel like they're trying to do right now. They're trying to overwhelm you. They're trying to make you afraid to exercise your natural right of free speech. And that's what displaying these alleged extremist symbols are. These are not extremist symbols. These are symbols that are entrenched in the roots of the United States of America. There's history. There's text to support these. There's tradition. There's so many people. I don't even want to think about the number because it's sad. War is always sad. There's so many people we don't even want to think about that have died for this country. For things like the American flag, the Betsy Ross flag, the Second Amendment. I hope you guys are encouraged. I really, really do. I don't want to just sit here in this landscaping shop and feel like I'm alone. And because of all you guys who are my friends and I get to hang out with, I don't feel that way. I don't want any of you guys to feel that way. I'm not just saying this. This is not me bragging on myself. This is bragging on you guys. And I can literally prove this. There's some of the smartest, best, kind-hearted people, patriotic, tough, anything that would define a true American that hang out in this chat every Friday night. If there's anyone out there right now that just can't take it anymore and you feel like you're just getting steamrolled by the government, there's a lot of people in here that have your back. So talk to each other, okay? Offer each other encouragement. 
if there's somebody out there right now that literally is just like, I'm, I'm just fed up. I can't take it anymore. I'm losing hope. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling sick. Just literally type in the chat if you want to, obviously. Just say, hey, I need someone to talk to. I bet you 100 bucks you'll have five people within minutes saying, hey, man, reach out to me. Here's my email. So I want to remind you guys of that because a lot of you guys are fighting the good fight and everyone around you just seems like they're completely nuts and I get it. So we could call this an echo chamber. We could call it whatever. I don't care. Those were probably echo chambers when the founding fathers sat around the taverns, when they met around the tree of Liberty in Massachusetts near Lexington and Concord. Those were probably actually just echo chambers too. See, they've tried to pervert the human language into the opposite of what it is. No, you do need to be around good people, and there's nothing wrong with that. Remember when Obama said, clinging to their Bibles and their guns. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'll take my guns, money, and freedom. You all can keep the change. Remember, that was his campaign slogan. Change you can believe in. No, no. <laughs> I'll keep my guns and freedom, right? So, with that said... A lot of you guys have asked me, they're like, well, how do I get a 2A EDU sticker or whatever? And I do have some merch, and my merch store is literally down there in the description. Not trying to sell you guys merch, but my merch is pretty cool. I picked this logo for a reason. The 2A is very big. 2, capital A. That's literally the Second Amendment. While I'm not the Second Amendment and had nothing to do with writing it, obviously, I do the 2 with the lowercase a for EDU. It's, yeah, it's 2A. It's still the same 2A, the Second Amendment, but I'm not literally the 2A. So I put 2A EDU real small here. Some people kind of like to show a little support and wrap the channel a little bit in public, and that's awesome. I like to wear stuff from some of my favorite channels too, but I put the 2A right there. My merch store is down there in the description. It's Black Swan Tactical, owned by my friend John Crump. So if you guys use my link down there, I get a small little kickback because it's my brand of merch, whatever wording you want to use for it. And then some more of the money goes to Black Swan Tactical, who is a fellow Second Amendment advocate and is out there fighting the good fight. And it's a way you can kind of kill two birds with one stone and support two people that are out there doing what they can at the same time. I also have this. Some of you guys remember this. Where's Hunter? You guys remember that? By the way, before we get to Hunter, let's go, Brandon. I got to make sure I get at least one person to leave for the politics tonight, right? You guys know how this works in the gun community. Let's go, Brandon. The former vice president, <laughs> radically trying to destroy this country, in my opinion, radically anti-gun, wants to ban literally all the guns. He said so himself. Speaking of him, his son, he's also a real beauty. Where's Hunter? Remember Hunter did artwork. You guys remember that? He did artwork. It was worth millions of dollars, right? You know what I'm saying? So I got with my friend, John Crump, and he's like, dude, let's do some 2A EDU artwork. This is mine here for the shop, but I ordered another one of these. These are custom printed. They can take a week or two to come in, but as soon as the second one lands, I'm going to be giving it away. So channel supporters, keep your eyes out for that. And also a quick reminder, a ton of you guys, that's how I'm able to do this channel without having corporate sponsorships. Sometimes I'll get a gun sent to me to test and evaluate. I buy 99% of those with my own money from the generous support of you guys too. But nobody from the industry pays me a penny. And I'm literally supported by you guys. Generous super chats on these streams. There's ways you can support on locals, including for free, by the way. Make sure you guys are a member of my locals. I drop some awesome deals there that I can't drop on YouTube, but some pretty good deals to save you guys a ton of money. And I'm always posting extra content, including weekly live streams where I touch guns, right? A lot of you guys are supporting on Patreon, channel members. Okay, Patreon. When you support there, if you put your address in, we send you one of these 2A EDU stickers. At the very least, we've also sent a lot of you guys extra stuff. If you're a Patreon supporter and you want one of these, but you haven't put your address in, make sure you get it in there. Channel members, local supporters, they don't give me your address. So, Linda, could you help me and throw that email in there real quick? What's up, Amanda Wilson? How you doing? Throw the email address in there. If you're a channel member or a YouTube, um, I'm sorry, local supporter, email and say, hey, um, I don't have a 2A EDU sticker and here's my address. Also, watch out for the post. I'm going to make a supporters post on Patreon. 
on channel members for YouTube. Make sure you check my community tab, in other words, and over on locals and remind you guys. So we'll send you one of these, and then you can wrap some MVE swag. And we'll also send you guys one of my 2A EDU trading cards. Why? Because, again, this is culture, and I'm going to be making more of these very soon with different guns. And, yeah, politics is downstream from culture. Just something to try to have fun. Because sports have all gone woke and everybody's like, you know, whatever. I can't even stand sports where they kneel before the, the flag and they kneel for the national anthem. And now the NBA is doing something completely crazy. Okay. So send her your name, screen name, and your address. We don't want your address for anything other than if you want us to send you stuff, then there you go. We have to. You know what I'm saying? We have to have your address, so there you guys go. Over on Black Swan Tacticals, where you can find my 2A EDU patch, for example. Shirts, hats, other stuff. I also have some special limited edition colors of patches, too, that I've sent out to some porters, and I'm going to be sending those out again soon. The whole NBA thing, this isn't really a sports culture show, but I heard they're doing some kind of, like, racial quota thing in proportion to the color of the people that live in the town and stuff. And I don't want to report fake news. I need to look into it more than that. But the NBA is doing something like so crazy that if you look at the populations of a lot of these cities and I need to look guys, this is all tentative. I need to read more info on it to see like if this is a hundred percent set in stone or if they're just talking about it, but it'll probably knock a lot of the black people off of all the teams which I guess that's what happens when you get go woke and make everything about people's race. By the way, the Second Amendment, <laughs> that's for all people, no matter what color you are. And gun control laws always have been and always will be racist, actually. And if you look at the tradition of gun control, the very first gun control laws that were put out, even before the NFA, were actually against literally to try to keep at that time what was former slaves, black people from being able to own guns. It's literally true. It's crazy. But yeah, so a lot of it goes, guys went, well, this is a trading card, but it's not a sports card. This particular one is a Russian Tula AKM. I don't sign all of them. I signed this one because somebody said, will you sign it for me? By the way, I don't think too many people would want that, but some of you guys ask for it. If you guys want to, um, if you guys get a sticker, if you want me to send you a sticker, Say you want me to sign it, and I'll I'll sign it for you like that. If you want me to. You're like, no, dude, I don't want on there. That lowers its value. I just want the big 2A. No, I totally get that. But some people do ask me that every once in a while. Shout out to all the Michigan people in here tonight and everyone else. You know, just the Michigan people, a little more of a shout out. But, guys, I don't have to be completely non-biased on here. I gravitate towards the Michigan people a little more, but not much. I love all of you guys. Trust me. Um, white Space Marines. No, this is literally provable. I wish the other side, whatever that even means nowadays, could see this. I wish the other side could see this. Gun control always has been racist. It always affects poor people the most. <laughs> it's literally been made because of the color of people's skin throughout history. Crazy stuff. So, yeah. All right. So I am going to take some um, questions. So try to get some of those ready. And do we have any so far that you liked, Linda? Linda works behind the scenes, if you guys are wondering when I'm like, Linda this, Linda that. She's a really special lady. And she's here within the stream, just she's not on camera right now. And she helps me pin the different comments and all that stuff. So, you know, shout out to California. Literally shout out to all you guys. I say that just to kind of razz you, but go ahead and represent your states. See who your neighbors are here in the chat. I know, I know, but there's, I'm in Michigan. What more can I say? You guys would do it too, right? On your show. You'd say shout out to everybody, right? Band talk. Shout out to Colorado, sir. But a little more of a shout out to Michigan. Oh, by the way, a little bit more encouragement while Linda's finding some questions here for you guys, while you guys are getting some of those churned up here. Um, what did I do? 
I know this is kind of a boring stuff, but look, we need to, we need to get encouraged, guys. I talked to a lady named Jamie Thompson. She's a Republican, very pro-gun, very liberty-minded lady, and she just won the primary here for the Michigan 28th House District. Talked to her for about 35 minutes on the phone today. There you go. So I talked to, I, like I said, I'm really into primary elections because that's what matters. Also texted my current state rep who's running for state Senate, Joe Bellino. Talked to him. Recently just talked to Michigan state rep, Bob Bazat, trying to coordinate a meetup with him in Lansing very soon. And I talked to my friend Rob, who's the one that gave us the channel, that huge 2A sign back there. He's very active in the 2A movement in Michigan. Also texted him back and forth. So there you guys go. Hopefully you guys are doing some of that stuff and you'll meet some cool people along the way, you know, definitely worth it. Gregory DiGiovanni with the generous super chat. Thanks, man. 1791. Yep. We talk about different key years in this country. 1776. Oh, I just got added to the MVE list, guys. I said 1776. What if I say July? What if I say, hold on, in Congress, July 4th. 1776. You guys have got my back, right? If a bunch of fab boys come here. <laughs> now they ain't going to come here. Come on. They're trying to scare us. Okay. Gregory, 1791, another very key year. That's when the Bill of Rights was put in. The first 10 amendments to the United States Constitution. Now, I love all of the first 10 amendments. I think you guys do too. The second amendment, though, just a little bit more. Like, they're all tied, okay, but just a little bit more because that was put in place not for if, but for when they come for all the rest. And they're trying to silence your speech right now. 2A all day, every day, don't tread on me, 1776, Betsy Ross, Waco, Texas, Ruby Ridge. Look, if I still live in America, I need to act like it and say some of the most important, historically significant things that exist in this country. Right? I hope you guys are thinking the same way. He said, Bill of Rights, baby. Thanks, Gregory. Why don't you do me a favor? I'm kind of feeling a little spontaneous tonight. Do you have any of the 2A EDU patches yet? Now, if you don't have the sticker, make sure you email us. That email, Linda's putting it there in the um, chat. So it's a given that we need to make sure you get a sticker, but you might already have one. If you don't have any of my patches yet, when you send Linda that email, Gregory, say, hey, man. 2AED wanted me to have a patch and a sticker, and I want to make sure you get a patch. It might be the black and white one. It might be another color. We'll figure it out. We'll get. We'll send you a surprise 2AEDU patch. I appreciate the support, man. Look, guys, this is literally not like a pay-to-play thing, but I, I give away the stickers for free to the supporters only because I can't afford. Like, I can barely keep this channel going. It's super expensive. I can't afford to send like 50,000 things out. So... Okay, what do we got, Linda? Start posting some of these questions up here. I just wanted to start it off with a bang. I was like, you know what? I get any I get any super chats that are a little bit on the generous side tonight. I'm going to throw them some extra two-way stuff because I want the – I mean, the two-way EDU stuff's cool, that part of it, but I just want that two-way plastered over America as much as we possibly can. All right, what do I have? Throw me some questions, darling. I think I saw a couple of them popping up here. We're going to give you guys a couple minutes to warm up. Okay, there is a new Taurus product. What's happening, Jerry Chance? Um, I know you're a supporter, for example, over on Locals. So just it'll be late tonight, if not tomorrow. Check if you're a channel member, Patreon, local supporter. Check for those posts. I'll remind you guys to send me your addresses if you want some of this 2A EDU swag. Um, he says, when will the new Taurus be available? Let's say right around the end of the month. It was originally going to come out a little bit before that. Stuff happens. I don't know why, but it got postponed just a little bit. But I can't say much more than that. Okay. When it gets closer, I'll do a little teaser video, which I've been known to do when new Taurus pistols are coming out. Where I'm like, all right, guys, stay tuned because tonight or whatever at midnight, you know how I'll do this, just to kind of give you guys the heads up because who's paying attention to notifications at midnight, at least from me, right? So. When it gets close, I will give you guys a little bit of a heads up on that. Other than that, stuff that's coming out that hasn't been released to the public yet, it's like serious stuff. And I could get 
I could get in trouble if I said more than that. And by the way, though, we have a great relationship with Taurus. They don't pay me one penny, but they give me access to information. They give me early access to review guns so you guys can get a review from me immediately the day that everyone's allowed to know about it. So I would never want to ruin that. And plus, I'm such good friends with a lot of the people at Taurus. I've been to three events now where they were there, where I've shot with these people, ate lunch with them, just sitting there shooting the breeze kind of thing. And there's some really, really cool people that work for Taurus. So I wouldn't want to betray my friendship and the trust of them so that they can help give and get, keep giving this channel perks and give you guys like immediate, like I literally post those videos at midnight when Taurus is coming out with a new gun and hopefully that helps you guys out, you know? Um, I, I, if I didn't have a channel, I would buy um, Taurus pistols anyways, because they're literally, as a whole, my favorites. Like, really, really love their pistols. Jeez, man, I don't even need to tell you guys that. But the relationship I have with them, not financial, just a good relationship, right? They know that a lot of my people, a lot of my friends here are big Taurus fans. That's to benefit all of you guys. So, when I want a Taurus gun for myself personally, when it's not going to be part of the channel... I just go out and buy it like all of you guys do. In fact, I just bought a Taurus pistol with my own money a couple weeks ago. You'll see a video of that soon. And bought one for my wife that I finally made it to the gun shop to pick up. And, yeah, for her new carry piece. So I buy this stuff just like you guys do. Yeah, that's cool, man. I'm reading some of the comments here. You guys are getting people, getting people involved in the two-way. Um, I just saw real quick here, and keep, keep these questions popping up here, Linda. I know you're pinning stuff, but Matthew Montrose recently sold his G3C to his brother, his first firearm, and he's proud to rep the 2A. That's awesome, dude. I'm telling you guys. Look, just sitting and saying, I will do nothing. I'm so black-pilled. I'm going to – no, that's weak. You all need to cut that out that are thinking like that. If there's your friends that are thinking like that, tell them to cut it out. The only way we win it is this. Look, I know you guys have no faith in the government, but you better start having some faith in yourselves. How are we supposed to have a government of the people, by the people, for the people when we're doing nothing? Look, giving, selling cheap, whatever you got to do to help get another Second Amendment advocate and gun owner in, in the community. Dude, that's fighting the good fight, Matthew Montrose and everybody else that's doing similar. That literally is it. I know it might seem frustrating. And you're thinking, well, I'm still only a grain of sand. The House still passed the assault weapons ban. Regardless that I got my brother that's a, now becoming a Second Amendment advocate. I, I get it. But here's the problem. They were nothing but a grain of sand at one time either, the other side. Because originally America was free. Originally America, the founding fathers set a well-regulated militia. I just got on the list again. Being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And I just made the list again. That's what America started at. These people that hated America, that were living in America, they were just grains of sand. Until they started piling enough grains of sand. Then they ended up with a scoop. Then it ended up as a pile. Then a hill. And then they became a mountain. And they're trying to bulldoze us. It's no different here. You're nothing but a grain of sand until there's like a millions of you grains of sand. Then you become a mountain. And this is your country, and this is your job. And we are in a cultural civil war, and the only way to win that is just one person at a time. We're facing, we're facing an empire of evil. I'm not, look, I'm not being naive to any of this. You're just a mere person, and this is a large elephant. And you guys have heard this saying, how do you eat an elephant? You just eat it one bite at a time. And that's what we need to do. And I'm right there with you, man. I bought my brother a Taurus G3 full size. His hands are way bigger than mine. He's quite a bit taller than me. His pinky actually almost hangs off the bottom of the G3 with the 15 round mag. Now it also comes with a 17 round mag. Not too many people are going to need much bigger gun than that. But, you know, he's a tall dude, big hands, long arms, all that. Got him a G3. We shot it together on the 4th of July on Independence Day this year. And I did a real quick video of me shooting it. With some of this awesome SAR USA ammo, you're going to have to go to Locals to check out this awesome deal. Just because I can't post it here. Free members have access to the deals on Locals, guys. The supporters get a few extra perks, but 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm literally hooking all of you guys up there. It's totally free to join. But I, I put a little video over on Locals about a month ago showing me shooting some of that SAR out of that G3 that we had just taken out of the box just a few minutes earlier. So do it, dude. Keep it up, man. All right, Linda, what else do we have? I thought I, I saw a few there. Okay, Yellow Dog 64. What's happening, Yellow Dog? Fellow Michiganian. Do you guys mind? I don't want to be called a gander anymore. That's a goose. Why do we want to be called Michiganders? I'm thinking Michiganian. What, what else? I mean, do you guys have better? Look, you silly goose. Michigander. You guys do know that's when the governor of Michigan was running against Lincoln and Lincoln came into Michigan to campaign and started calling him a gander. Michiganders. That was originally making fun of us. So, hello, fellow Michiganian yellow dog. You guys can talk however you want. I don't care. But there's a lot of cultural stuff and words that we don't think about a lot of times, right? Opinions on Tudor Dixon. Okay, I went to the 2A days. I did a video with <clears throat> then-candidate, he's since lost, Ryan Kelly. I had also talked to Ralph Rebant in the past. Ranky couldn't make time for me for the interview. I don't know. He just wouldn't do it. I had three questions. I told the staff what they were going to be. Um, Tudor Dixon didn't show up to that event. I would have loved to have asked her questions the media won't ask. I would say this about Tudor Dixon. Let me keep this 2A related because there's a whole thing of where's the sources of her money coming from, the DeVos family, all these things. I would note, though, in the third gubernatorial debate between the Republicans, the primary debate, it's a few weeks ago. I know when no one watches them. I do. I'm a nerd. I get it. But they were asked about the, 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 the host, the guy asking the questions, was referring to the AR-15 as an assault rifle and all this. And saying, how can you keep assault rifles out of the mentally ill hands? Um, Saladano and Kelly got right in there and said, you're wrong. It's not an assault weapon. Okay? They were calling it an assault weapon. It's not that. They said it right straight. They said, we reject your premise. And they talked about mental health. Ranky said something similar. Not quite as strong-willed as Saladano and Kelly. Those are more of the fighting kind of candidates that we have here in Michigan. When it got to Tudor Dixon, she only talked about mental health, and I never even heard her acknowledge the Second Amendment in that question, so I wonder. I don't know how many people voted in the Michigan primary that's watching right now, but we may be back. I'm not sure. I'm going to reserve on that yellow dog, and I'm going to just put it as honest as I can. We may. Let's emphasize the word may. Air quotes for those of you listening. We may be back to this whole... Uh, same sides of the coin, two sides of the same coin. We may have a lesser of two evils. I don't know yet. And if anybody's watching from the Tudor Dixon campaign, I'll have her on the show. I'll bring her on a live stream. We can do it off air. And I want to start off by asking her three simple questions. And then we can talk as long as she wants after that. So there you go. I don't know. I haven't been able to get access to her to get an interview. And she didn't really seem as impassioned about the Second Amendment as some of the other candidates. So she may, we may have a lesser of two evils scenario in Michigan again. I don't know. I'm reserving right now because it's not that I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt or whatever. I need to really like to ask her some questions. You know what I'm saying, yellow dog? Yeah, yeah, White Space Marines. My friend, um, my friend Ban Talk gave this to me as a gift, and I really like it. If it flips, it ships. Also gave me a nice coin, and I need to bring that back into the shop, man, so I can use your coin that you gave me for my lesser of two evils, two different sides of the same coin. But a couple of you guys have, you guys have sent me a lot of stuff. Some of it to give away to other people. I got a couple giveaways, by the way, that I'm going to be doing soon. One of them are from Marco Polo sent to the channel. I'm going to get that posted this weekend, guys, so stay tuned for that. And then speaking of ModBot here, I have some PowerTech flashlights. And, yes, I know people at PowerTech, but I bought them with my own money because I like to keep this stuff, like, totally legit here, guys. And I'm going to be giving away some of those, too. So, yeah. Oh, there you go. 
that flips it, Sheps. What's happening? It gave me a, a, a gold coin that I really, a, gold, a silver coin that I really cherish. I said gold because I was looking over here. Now, I don't have, I have a coin here. It looks like it's gold, but it's, trust me, it's not gold. These are little um, Mikhail Kalashnikov, okay? And they look pretty cool. It's got the AK on one side of it. I'll show you guys this real quick. Get those questions into Linda if you guys want to ask me questions. You guys ask me questions a mile a minute in the comment section. And it's nice because I can answer some of these questions and we can have answers and thoughtful discussion in front of a bunch of people. Look how shiny this is. Wow. You can like see the double image of me holding it up in the, it's like a mirror on top of a mirror. Not real gold though. But yeah, if, if it flips, it ships. Gave me a nice silver coin. Band talk did. And I, I keep that stuff. Because if it comes from a friend, somebody that I like, it becomes way more valuable to me than just the silver or the numismatic value, right? I think some of you guys are the same way. All right. What else have we got, Linda? Get those questions going here. Thanks, Timothy McGee. I saw your question there out of the corner of my eye. Yeah, I, I told you guys. I voted for Ryan Kelly. Um, Opie Angst. Um, I have no idea who either of those people are, so. Sorry, no comment. I have no idea who they are, okay? Throw that Jesse Meek up there real quick because he's leaving right now and then come back to band talk real quick. Can you? Linda, because Jesse's leaving. What's happening, Jesse? How you doing, man? Thanks for the super chat, dude. Um, <clears throat> Email me, Jesse. Okay? Throw that, throw that email in there for him. Email me, and I want to make sure you get one of these stickers, dude. Um, He says, no questions or time to stick around. Just saw you were live and wanted to send some support. Have a good night. I'll watch the whole thing tomorrow. Okay. If he's already gone, thanks, Jesse. And uh, make sure you email us, 2aedu-perks at gmail.com. And I want to get you one of these stickers. Okay, so you can represent the 2A and get on the FBI list. You know what I'm saying, dude? Nice avatar, by the way. Thanks, Jesse. Um, Bill's just dropping by. What's happening, Bill? All right, bring the band talk thing back up here. Some of you guys just dropped by for a minute, but some of you come back. Okay, what's happening, band talk? He says, question, if you have one AK for the rest of your life, which one do you grab and why? This is actually pretty simple. If you look at the AK in my bedroom that's ready to go, it's a Wasser 1063, one of the older imports that was made from an original military parts kit. I also have in my shop, okay, for the same defensive purposes, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness purposes, right? Um, another Wasser 1063. I've had them both forever, okay? I guess if it was literally just one specific one, because I'm such an AK nerd, sometimes I have multiple examples of the same model. Because they used to be super, super cheap back in the day. And everybody hated them. Now it's a double-edged sword. I kind of wish everyone still hated the AK so I could still buy them for $300, $500 for a really nice one. Now, I I'm glad more people are getting into the AK. Great. I posted a $599 AK on my locals today earlier, by the way. Made in the USA. That sold out, but I wish I could talk about that stuff more. I can't because we have Susan Wiki Wiki here on YouTube. What's what's going on, Susan? For those of you that are new here, just ask the chat. They'll tell you who she is, but there's, there's a lot of rules on here, okay? I love being on here because that's how I get to hang out with you guys, but I over on Locals is where I can say literally, like, check this out. Here's the link. This is a crazy AK deal. All right, uh, Wasser 1063, I've had it forever. Cold Hammer Forge, Chrome Line Bore. Um, Century imported them. Sometimes they messed up the magwells. Sometimes the sights were canned. And the examples that I have of Wassers, mine are not. And they've just been nothing but reliable. Just workhorses. The nuts and bolts of the parts, basically all of the parts, except for a few U.S. compliant parts for import, made in the Cougar, Cougar, however you want to pronounce it, factory in Romania, that started off with their PM Model 63 in 1963. So they've been making AKMs for a long, long time and do a good job of it. Now, I really like my PSA Romanian parts kit build too. But I'm going to go back to the one that's never let me down. I actually have two of them, but it could be either one of them. I wouldn't care. 
They've just never let me down. They just run. They're not pretty, and it doesn't even matter. They're just, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Some of you guys are shaking your heads going, oh, but that's the beauty of an AK, though, too, at the same time, right? So, yeah, thanks for that question, man, for getting an excuse to talk about the the AK. Linda, make sure Band Talk has plenty of um, MVE. I need Band Talk up at the top of that list with me. You know what I'm saying? Just think what an honor that was for those founding fathers. John Hancock signed it first, biggest and boldest, right in the middle of the Declaration of Independence. What an honor those guys had by being on that list. Make sure, make sure Band Talk has plenty of merch, Linda. Send him some more stuff because I need I need to make sure Band Talk's up at the top of that list with me, okay? I know we already have your address, man. You've been a channel supporter for a long time, dude. Um, you diver, I think you might have typed in just before I saw that. I love my, <laughs> my PSA Romanian. My GF3R built off of, in my case, I got like so lucky. And they did not know it was 2A EDU. I was doing a factory tour like two weeks later after I got it. I brought it all the way back down to South Carolina. Took the first shots at it with at the Iraq veteran event. Marksman TV, my friend Chris, he was part of breaking it in for me there. And then not much after that, a bunch of you guys at my hangout. Supporters, make sure you guys read those posts I'm making. We're doing another hangout this fall. And a lot of you guys got to shoot that. It's a nice rifle. I got an unissued parts kit, and they did not know it was for 2A EDU. Literally, I promise. Like, I brought it there, was hanging out with my friend Josiah. I had it there in the parking lot. My friend Frank, are you still hanging out with us, Frank? We were there in the parking lot. He greeted us downstairs, getting ready to do the grandioso tour. Like, it's quite the spread down there. Going through just looking at all of this just sweetness. Watching pallets and pallets of, like, pallets of ARs, like, halfway up to the ceiling, like, it's crazy. It's crazy. You got to watch yourself because you want to go broke and buy everything you see, right? But no, he's like, well, what's it look like? I'm curious. And I was out there by, by, by my buddy Frank's truck, took it out. Josiah looked at it. He's like, wow. Like they had no idea. When I buy stuff like this, which I bought from PSA, I don't tell them, by the way, this is for me. Make sure you whatever. I got lucky, but man, what a beautiful rifle. And it's been reliable so far. I'll bring it out again this fall. Okay. Check the Patreon post if you guys are supporters there, locals, channel members. It's called the Community Tab, guys. And there's a video you watch. There's an RSVP, and hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys there. I'll bring it out. We'll run more rounds through that PSA AK. Um, I'm, it's not going to be my one and only because I've just had those wassers so long. But I watched them building them at PSA, and I was very, very impressed. I couldn't get video footage of that because it's proprietary. You know, they don't want their competitors getting access to their methods. But I was very impressed with their jigs. They're it's pretty, pretty impressive how they build them. I don't want to say too much because you never, ever want to give up a trade secrets because then a competitor that's listening could copy off of them. But I was impressed. And I've been around AKs forever. So I'll tell you that much. Um, Bill Alexander. What's happening, man? Another Michiganian. He says, ask him if he heard about the Sixth Circuit ruling on a gun range. Is this very recent? Let me make a note of that. I might have, but it's not ringing a bell right now. So hold on. Sixth Circuit. You guys are the ones that help keep me in the loop about a lot of stuff going on right now. So the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, I assume you mean, which covers several states, and it's on the west side of Michigan. Sixth Circuit gun range case. I will check on that. Thank you, Bill. If it was today, I haven't had a chance. I just got off the lawnmower, geez, within mere minutes of jumping on here to go live. Some of you guys are from South Carolina. I'll be down in South Carolina. I'm in Michigan. Um, I'll be down in South Carolina here in, oh, geez, I guess only about a month and a half. Then I'll be making my way a little further south to Georgia. I'm going to try to make one, if not two, pit stops in Kentucky. A couple friends of mine there that might be hanging out tonight. The Waynes are in Kentucky. I'd like to maybe, maybe be able to grab dinner with you guys or something real quick. And um, 
Also, I might have an opportunity to look at another firearms manufacturer in Kentucky, but I'm not quite sure yet on that. But I'm going to be for sure being down there in um, South Carolina. So, All right. What other questions do we have? Okay. Roy the Boss, what light do you recommend on long guns? That depends. I have actually, gosh, I wish I could touch guns here. If we were on locals right now, I'd just go grab it. I can't do it, though. I know some people do on their gun channels, whatever. I've got too many people watching me. Right, Susan? Shout out to all the YouTube moderators, though, that do like the channel. I know, and I'm not even joking, guys. There are some people that work at YouTube. Her, not so much. You know what I mean? She had her chance to be friends, but not so much anymore, really. I still send her flowers from time to time, but it ain't going to happen, Susan. But, no, there are some people that work at YouTube that have kind of slipped up on the down low and said, dude, pst, I like your channel. I mean, I still have to completely bend you over and destroy it if you were to touch a gun live or whatever, but I do like it. So, shout out to you guys. They're just doing their job. Isn't that what they say? I'm just doing my job, man. I've got, I've got new pink hair dye to buy. They said I've got to get... <laughs> whatever who knows now there's all types of different people that work at youtube um i actually have a streamlight tlr 1hl that's kind of doing the trick for me now would that be for all rifles no um streamlight's pretty good stuff now if you got the big money they're surefire and eh, there's not a lot of arguing about those guys but that's a little bit of coin I found stream lights do pretty good. Power tech. I love my power tech flashlights. And I'm going to be giving some of those away soon. So keep your eyes and ears, ears peeled for those. Here's a power tech. Okay. There's the M5, the M5 G2. These are like super, super bang for your buck. I actually have a coupon code for those guys. If you use 2AEDU15, 2AEDU15, you can say 15%. They have weapons mounts for these. So if you're on a budget, because these fit within the budget range, the G2 is even way more powerful than this one. This is the Taurus edition, right? The Taurus co-branded with PowerTech. Um, they're in North Carolina, by the way, just so you guys know. They're out of North Carolina. I've talked to them on the phone. Excellent customer service. My friend Jeremy bought one, okay? He had a little snafu with it. Literally, like they like he, he put in a request. The guy called him on the phone just to make sure he had a new one, like within a couple days. So, lifetime warranty. We were working on my truck, and he got it so covered in grease, like it literally dropped in the grease that you couldn't even like recognize as a flashlight. We brought it in the shop. You guys probably can't see here, okay? Over here, there's a sink off to the side, okay. And we literally took the gallon of fast orange, Permatex fast orange, and literally had to sit there with the orange clean for minutes just to get the thickness off of it. Super hot water, more orange clean, right? With pumice in it. Then like some dish soap, then some water. It was totally fine afterwards, and he's still carrying it every single day. And that's the G2 version, which is the improved version of this. So I highly recommend this within a decent budget, 15% off. If you use my code over there at PowerTax website, 2AEDU15. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed with this. Streamlight's always been good, okay, for me. Surefire, I've never been able to afford their stuff, so I can't give you firsthand experience, but people that I trust, people that have used it, it's really hard to argue with their quality, but you better have some coin, okay? Because it's not cheap. But, yeah. Um, there you go. There's a few options for you. But, yeah, maybe check one of these out. I don't know. Hopefully that helps you, that coupon code, a little bit. They have other cool lights, too. What's happening, Reptile, guys? I saw you out of the corner of my eye, man. What's happening, Cancer Mouse? Come on, Ting Ting. Come on, girl. Get your name back. Nah, you can name yourself whatever you want. It's just my girl, Ting. You know what I'm saying? Um, we send these 2A EDU stickers out to all of the supporters. I don't actually sell them because I'm not set up for that type of thing. All my other merch is available at Black Swan Tactical. I'm just responding to a question, guys. I'm not 
I'm not trying to like keep selling you merch, but people are asking. Um, Black Swan Tactical has the patches, the 2A EDU artwork. I'm going to be giving one of these away as soon as it comes in, by the way. And um, shirts, hats, stuff like that. The stickers, um, like I said, I pretty much just give them away to any kind of supporter. You can support for like as little as three bucks a month on um, channel member. You get access to custom emojis, supporters only posts. I do a hangout every year. Patreon's literally as little as a buck. Um, locals, five bucks a month. If you do 11 months, you get a free month. I do tons of extra stuff on locals though. So, and there you go. And then I do tons and tons of giveaways for supporters. So there you go. I try to give back as much as I can. Just and try to make things as fun as I can. But I can't just literally send these out to everybody because there's just so many darn people like out here that hang out. I don't know how this many people started watching my channel, but I can't afford to send out like 50,000. I'm not well to do, but there you go. That's how you get the stickers. And if any of you guys that are emailing, just check your post. I'm going to be posting these for channel members, Patreon, local supporters. If you want me to sign it, just let me know and I'll, I'll sign some of these. I don't think many of you do, but some people ask like after the fact. I'm like, dude, I would have signed it. You just need to ask me. Um, Wesley Poe. Okay, let's see what we have here. It says, I have a Mossberg bolt action, 762. Okay, that mean, can mean several things. 762 NATO, 760 by 39, 54 R. Okay, had a friend use it. Bought the wrong ammo and the round jammed in the chamber. I got it out carefully, but wonder if it messed anything else up. No signs of damage. Probably not. Asterix, a steel cleaning rod, which sometimes is the best trick to get it out, could mess up a chamber. Okay. What's happening, KMI building? What's up, Jane Locke? Um, Jane Locke, she's a good one, too. How you doing, Jane? If you use something to pry... Without being there, I can't really completely answer the question, but you said carefully, no signs of damage. So with those context clues, you're probably okay. You know what I'm saying? You're probably all right. What's happening, DLD, after dark? How's it going? Shout out to your channel, man. Um... Yeah, for budget flashlights, I'm really recommending the power tag, guys. I know some of you guys have other different suggestions and whatnot, but I really like them quite a bit. 2A EDU 15 will save you 15% site wide over there. Uh, Marco Polo with a super chat and a channel member and local supporter and the next sponsor of the next giveaway I'm going to be doing, actually. We say it all official like it's a sponsorship. No, he's just a friend of the channel and a friend of you guys and sent me some stuff. Just like our friend Dauntless Defense and sent some cool mag loaders. We got those shipped out to the winners. And yeah, the official sponsor of the Marco, hopefully you're laughing right now. He says, calendar mark for the new Taurus. Just curious about it. Um, thanks again. Well, thanks for the super chat, man. And he says, I feel left out and not being from Michigan. No, no, no. It was only just a slightly... Bigger shout out to all the Michiganians. So, nah, don't feel too left out, dude. But if you want to travel to Michigan and hang out with us this fall, man, RSVP. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I know life happens and there's probably five reasons you can't, but you're invited. We got a few people that are going to be traveling across the state to hang out with us this November. All right. Um, Fat Man Prepper, what's happening? Says, thoughts on the Kiapa Pack 9 I like it quite a bit. It's funny because, look, I'm going to, I'm just going to tease this. Most people don't know about it yet, but there's actually a 2A EDU podcast in the works slash already started. Right now, I've only been posting them to locals because there's a spot for podcasts there. But we're going to be launching it to the podcast world soon. And the Kiapa Pack 9 was one of them we discussed in one of our recent episodes. My friend Mateo and I are doing a podcast talking about all kinds of cool stuff. So if you guys are into podcasts, any week now, we're going to launch it out into the iTunes podcasting network world, right? But right now, we're just doing a soft launch. All the people over on Locals are kind of ask, acting as beta testers, viewers for it. 
getting you guys' feedback over there. Um, I just talked about that. I have several videos on the Kiapa Pack 9, okay, including Linda. What's your name tonight? Is it Linda Ultra Maga Mama? Yeah, Ultra Maga Mama Linda. She shot it, and she's actually in the video shooting it a little bit. So I, I like it. Made in Romania. Little 9 mil pistol. And what's funny is I just posted a deal on one of those over on Locals just the other day. So, yeah, I like it. It's pretty cool. Um, get a hold of me, Jane. I need to reach out to you with the uh, dates and info on that as well. Um, White Space Marines, what's happening, dude? Man, you've been hanging out here a long time. I'm glad you're still hanging out with us. You're welcome. He says, thanks for always being there. What rifle is on your bucket list? Man. Hmm. <laughs> Only one? This sounds like such an easy, easy question, but it's just the hardest when you're like a gun fanatic like me and you want them all, but I'm a realist. I know I'm never going to have nearly all of them. And the more I keep learning about guns, because I'm always learning something new every day, the more I realize how much I don't know. And I know some of you guys are nodding right now going, oh, here's the problem. If I could only get this one gun, then you get it, and you're like, okay, awesome, but then there's this other one, but then there's this other one, and then there's this other one. This is going to sound like bucket list means I'm actually going to try to get one. I don't know if I'll ever afford it. I actually kind of want like an M82A1 Barrett. I know that sound of counts, sounds like a, a crazy Ivan off-the-wall answer, but I don't have a 50 BMG in. I believe they're going to ban them someday. Well, they're going to try to ban all of them, but they're going to try to ban them someday. They may, they may not succeed. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was asked in the vein of I can dream, right? I, I'm so far away <laughs> from being able to afford one of those. But I would like to have a Barrett. Semi-auto. I've been lucky enough where I've had a couple friends let me shoot theirs in the past, and wow, just wow. It's like you shoot guns, and they're all a little bit different, right? Yeah, they're trying to ban them now. Of course they are. We're going to stop them, though. That's why we're still talking about the Second Amendment. We're still getting our friends and family into guns, right, like we were talking about earlier. That's what we're doing to stop them. We're finding good candidates in the primaries, right? Hope you guys are. Going down to your state capitals and saying, hold on a minute. You do know you work for me, right? Let's talk about this pro-gun bill. Let's talk about this anti-gun bill. I know you guys are doing that. So that's what we're going to do to make sure they don't ban them. But, you know, you shoot all these guns and no two are exactly alike. And that's why it's awesome. And we all have this <laughs> super expensive, crazy habit of just we can never have enough ammo or guns. And, like, who complained because they got to shoot too much? And they're all awesome in their own way. Now, I've shot a few guns that actually aren't so awesome. Some of them do actually suck to shoot. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Some guns are not fun to shoot for many reasons. But you shoot all these guns, and they all have a little bit in common. Then you grab a Barrett. The thing weighs like 30-something pounds. And if you have your teeth closed in a certain way or almost closed, it can make your teeth chatter and hurt your teeth. There's just something about having that much power in front of you. It's different. And this is coming from me that shot a 10 gauge, okay? One handed in a 460 Weatherby Magnum. Go look <laughs> on my YouTube channel. I have videos to prove it. Sometimes I like hard recoil and stuff, but those actually recoiled more than the 50 BMG due to weight and many other factors. And the fact that when I was shooting the 50, that's on my channel too, by the way. Actually, there's a there's a video of Linda shooting the 50 BMG on this channel. You guys have to go back in the search. We're talking two, three years ago now. But you can just feel the power. You can just feel the air, just the woo. And all of you that served that were in infantry and got to shoot a Mod Deuce in full auto, I know it's like a thousand times better than what I could have ever experienced. So just go ahead and gloat in the chat and get us all jealous as heck. Any infantry veterans that shot a Mod Deuce, ding, 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 ding. yeah, I know. I don't know, actually. Just get us as jealous as you 
possibly can and throw it in the chat. But there's something about, what do you think, Mateo? You can just feel the pressure. Like you just feel the power coming from that gun of a 50. It's crazy. Even though a 10 gauge kicks more, a 460 Weatherby Magnum kicks more, a 500 Smith and Wesson in the hand kicks more, right? Yes, Gore. What's happening, Gore? Yes, the, the Barrett's break helps out a ton. You're right. Um, Vito, what's happening? Vito Spatafiore. What's happening, man? All right, what other questions, Linda? DLD After Dark. What's happening, man? Okay. He says, in my opinion, is my AKS 74U and 5.56 sacrilegious? It's an Arsenal SLR 106UR, by the way. Okay. Um, no, not sacrilegious. I'm kind of like a to each his own type of person with that stuff. I do like 5.56 AKs. And yeah, 5.56, contrary to popular belief, is actually not a sacrilegious caliber at all to the AK. And we're on YouTube. I can't, but if I wasn't, uh, Susan Wiki Wiki, right? If it wasn't for her and all the rules here, I could look, they're so far away. I couldn't even come close to touching them right now. But in theory, I could grab you guys a Polish radon, right? <laughs> the Beryl, the Beryllium. It stands it's short for the Beryllium, the element on the periodic table of elements. I got one of those over there. I have the Polish Tantal in 545, which I love, by the way. I also have a Yugo M85 over there. And back there, a Yugo M90. All of which are military variants. Now, I have the civilian whatever version. But, yeah. And don't forget, it's not... Look, I'm going to call it an AK. But it's actually the most evolved version of the AK. But it's still a Kalashnikov at its heart. And that'd be the Galil, which I really enjoy my Israeli Galil 5.56. So, yeah, I'm fine with 5.56 AKs. And they were fielded from the previously mentioned militaries. The former Yugoslavia, you know, presently Zestava, Serbia, for example, with the 5.56. Yeah, they're, they make military 5.56s for sure. Same thing with Poland, although they're transitioning away from from the Boreal in Poland and go into this goofy looking thing. But yeah, Poland, Israel, Israel's always used, I think more M16s, probably nowadays M4s than Galil's, but the Galil was their country's rifle, right? It's like the Uzi, things like that. Kalashnikov variant optimized, you know, for more desert use, upswap charging handle on the Galil bottle opener in the bipod. That's another French benefit. It depends what type of Galil you have. Uh, like with the Galil SAR. So, yeah. Not sacrilegious, and you provided me a segue that always gets people mad at me. So thanks, DLD. Whenever I say, no, guys, there's like totally like if you want to be, well, first of all, you should all do you. And whatever round it's chambered in, if it works, and if it works for you, like it has to work. First of all, does it feed around? If you can't get past that, who cares about anything else? When you pull the trigger, does it go click, bang? Good. If it goes click, no, bang, who cares about anything else? It didn't bang. Okay. So you all do you. Now, for the people that are like, but it's still sacrilegious, and I, people get so mad at me sometimes. The AK was only in 7.62 by 39. Oh, really? Except for when it wasn't, because Mikhail Kalashnikov designed the AK-74 and 5.45 by 39. Former Comblock countries like Poland, as they were leaving and transitioning out of that, switched over from 545, right, into 556 AKs. You're also going to see places like the former Yugoslavia, who was never part of the Com bloc but had those tendencies and used Soviet caliber weapons. They went from 762 by 39 directly over to the 556. They never fielded the 545, okay? So. And we also have AKs in 308, 762 NATO. We have AKs in 8mm Mauser, the Yugo M76. Look that up. The Yugo M77, which I also have out of reach, Susan, in the other room. That's a military variant. Look that up. You can also look at AK variants in 762 by 54R. Namely, look at the PSL. Out of Romania, 
And we even have 9 millimeter variants that have been and still are being used by the um, Russians. So, yeah, there's... Five five six is actually a legit military caliber. And as Jeff Crohn said, DLD is great at sparking controversy. And somehow that is controversial. And usually I'll get a thumbs down over it. So don't forget to give me the thumbs up, guys. It's a easy way to support the channel. It helps the algorithm. And it cancels out the one or two people that got so mad they'll never hang out again. Because I said that 556 is acceptable in an AK. But my go-to is a 762 by 39. So like I answered earlier when Van Talk brought it up. All right, what else have I got going on, Linda? Um, eggs in my coffee. Any word when PSA might start churning out 545 by 39? Still no. I announced it the day that they said we could make it public. I also did a follow-up. I will follow up again soon. It's been a couple months. I do need to do a follow-up. I need to talk to Josiah for other reasons to plan some logistics with my trip down there in a month and a half, and I'll see what I can find out. I will tell you guys this. It's literally right now on the top of my locals feed, 545 by 39. I do know a place that still has it. Um, reasonable by most standards, actually. It's literally one of the top couple posts on locals right now. The, the link's in the description. It's free to join. You can get to that post totally for free if you need some right now. Um, and also some awesome Bulgarians. Bulgarian 762 by 39 that looks very similar to the Vimepal Russian stuff with uh, lacquered and sealed cases, um, a.k.a. the most, I guess, in the last few years, Red Army Standard started, using, started shipping that ammo out, repackaging it. Before that, it was Tula ammo with Red Army Standard, but... The more recent Red Army Standard stuff before it got banned. Also, Golden Tiger, if you guys are familiar. There's some stuff coming out of Bulgaria. Very affordable price. I cannot promote it here, guys. I'm not trying to be like that, but that information is all available free over there on Locals. And, yeah. All right. What other questions do we have here? JJ Rainey, what's happening, man? Channel member. I know you've been on Patreon a while. Thanks for your support, man. He said, question, if you had to buy an AK today, which one would it be? Wow, oh, man. I'm thinking about, I was just talking to somebody earlier about this. I'm thinking about when they go on sale and you got to act quick. That's why I posted it on Locals earlier today and it was gone in a couple hours. And I don't know if any of you guys are able to snag one, but I'm thinking about getting one of those $5.99 OD green, even though that's not even my favorite AK color at all. PSA is just the cheapest AK you can buy, and I just want to pound the crap out of it. So if I can get the money for the ammo, I literally just like to sit there and just run that thing like a dog and see what I can do. That might not be what you were asking about. If you're wondering what I'm suggesting, I don't know, man. There's lots of options. It depends what your budget is. I'm really happy with my PSA GF3R, which is Romanian. You can buy the all USA made one for quite a bit cheaper, but I was really happy with mine built on an original Romanian parts kit. Um, they build them the same way though, in the same factory as the American made ones. If you're just looking to get into it, don't have a lot of money. Check out my locals. When I post it, you got to have the money saved up and just get on it because they saw it almost immediately. They put out a $5.99 special. And it's also a way you can help support the channel for free over there, too. Um, it doesn't change your price at all, but I get a small kickback if you use my links. Um, I would recommend that to a lot of people that are kind of maybe thinking about the AK, but not quite sure. There's a lot of bang for the buck there, lifetime warranty. Um, yeah, if you have a bigger budget and you want to get into different things, different calibers, oh, man, I could talk about this for four hours. The sky's the limit. I just want us to be like, this is the cheapest AK. Let's run the snot out of it. Now, I'm not going to do the complete torture task. I'm literally just trying to destroy it. Like, other channels do that, and that's awesome. And I know you guys love watching those videos, but I don't do that stuff just to do it. Like, I'd probably get more views if I did is what I'm saying. But, no, what I mean by it is just, like, literally just run it, like, super hard and just dump tons of ammo through it. 
and just run it like I was in the middle of a battlefield and like didn't have any backup, that kind of thing, right? Kind of like a Rambo type scenario, you know, just the one man just standing there, just ding, 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 ding. yeah, my finger would probably get tired because we can't have big air quotes full auto in this country. We need to change that too and repeal the NFA. Repeal the NFA. That just got me up on a list. Okay, I digress. I just want to see like how hard one can be run. I've watched them build them. I was very impressed with watching them build them. Forge Carrier. Okay. Forge Bolt. Okay. Forge Trunnion. Let's just see as you can run the snot out of it. I don't know. Um, One Love Design. Thank you for the question. says, when you're not working and advocating for the 2A community, what are your other passions? Okay. I guess I work way too much owning a very, very small business that was almost put out of business by Governor Whitmer, Gretchen Whitmer. <laughs> she's a real beauty, right? In a different kind of way. When we say like she's a real beauty and Dana Nussel, huh? yeah, that's in a different kind of way. Trust me. Um, it was illegal to cut grass in Michigan a couple years ago. Now gas is so expensive. I'm just busting my butt trying to keep my very small business that I've had going for 20 years or whatever it's been now. So I work a lot. I spend time with firearms and doing two way stuff. There's not much time left. I did have a great time just the other day though, with my beautiful, awesome wife and my baby girl walking around the Monroe County fair. I, I like going to the fair. That's pretty cool. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, what other stuff do I do? I don't have time for really a lot of hobbies to be honest with you. Sometimes I kill two birds with one stone, like while I'm writing my... I love listening to podcasts. I really do. I, I've always loved to learn. I always like to just soak up as much information as possible. That's why probably a lot of people don't like to do a lot of the stuff that I like to do. I know that's kind of boring, but some of you guys are like total book nerds too and bookworms and, you know, information sponges. But even when I was younger, man, I'd sit there and there'd be a new set of Topps baseball cards that would come out or Don Russ or Fleer or Score. Am I bringing some of you guys back to the late 80s? Back before, back when, I mean, maybe I was just too young to know any better, but when I was nine years old back in 1988, let's say, it seemed like they were just playing sports and I didn't have to deal with their BS and their kneeling for this flag, but flying another flag. And I used to like sports a lot more back then. I would sit there and literally memorize like everybody's stats, all the baseball player stats on the back of all their cards. And like, I could tell you, like, I can't remember this now. It's been like 30 years ago, but I could tell you in the 88 top set, Alan Trammell would be card number 200 or whatever it would be. Like, I, I was always into that stuff. Got into guns sometime in the mid 90s, around 1994. And I listened to a lot of podcasts while I'm cutting grass, though. My, my over the ear earmuffs that are Bluetooth, I listen while I'm cutting grass. So I am lucky there. It's, it's crappy work working outside, all kinds of crap. Rain so much. I'm just going to be killing myself all weekend long to try to catch up. But one of the benefits is when you're not dealing with all the crappy stuff of the elements of Mother Nature, God bless her, but she can make it hard to work outside, right? I get to get paid while I listen to podcasts. So I think that answered your question, right? But I don't have any like really, really cool hobbies necessarily. I like cowboy boots, okay? I like Lucchese cowboy boots. I like Justin cowboy boots. I like Double H. Don't really have time to wear them much because if I have some nice cowboy boots, I do. But I'm always like working too much to want to mess them up. <laughs> yes, One Love Design. Thanks for the reminder. He says, fuel the signal. It's called the algorithm, guys. That's what I guess lets your videos get out to more people or not. Thumbs up, comments, leave a chat, all that kind of stuff. So you can help support the channel. Um, Jesse Meek, thanks for another super chat, dude. He said, just sent you an email. Have a nice night. Well, I hope you have a good one too, man. Come to Kansas and we'll hit the range and grill steaks. I think I would like to have a Kansas steak. Can I ever make it that far? I don't know. We're not going to rule it out, but I don't know. But, man, I'd love to. You guys have some. There's a man that just sounds good. America 2A steak. You know what I'm saying? I definitely like a good 
like a good barbecue or a good steak. Definitely not a vegetarian. Okay. Definitely not a vegetarian. As soon as I said barbecue, look who shows up. All these Texans. What's happening, Joe Morgan? We'll get to yours in one second. I just saw a couple Texans. I said barbecue, and these people just pop out of the blue. What's happening, Clover Tech? Shout out to you in Texas. And look at this guy right here. You guys know Lucchese Boots, handmade in Texas. Now, not all of them are, but yeah. I like my Lucchese classics. Ted Cruz wears those. On the Senate floor, did you guys know that? And he has the come and take it. <laughs> he has the come and take it flag, speaking of Texans. All right, I need to stop giving Texas a shout out. I mean, shout out to my good friend Smash Time and his channel. Shout out to my good friend Clover Tech and his channel. And I wish you guys all the best, but here's the problem, though. These guys from Texas can get a bit cocky sometimes. So bigger shout out to all the Michiganians, but also shout out to these good friends of mine that hang out in Texas. I said barbecue and they literally showed up. <laughs> Did you notice that Clover? <laughs> Our friend Jesse's talking about eating steaks in Kansas. I'm like, I bet you, I bet you Jesse would cook a good steak out there, you know? And then I said, and some barbecue. <laughs> and then these Texans just come in here. There we go. Hold on a minute. We're going to get right back to Joe Morgan. Don't go away, Joe. I just got to, you got to stop these Texans in their tracks, right? The Republic of Texas. There we go. There's another one. Ah, that always comes in threes, doesn't it? Shout out to my friend from Texas. <laughs> Denny's plant-based journey. Barbecue and steak. Texas beef, baby. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm all about it, man. Oil. I like to burn petroleum fire vehicles. My 2007.3 liter power stroke out there. Appreciates that Texas oil, Denny. I know you work around, or at least adjacent to, around in that type of industry, right? And, um, yeah, man, I, I need more of that nice Texas oil over here in Michigan so I can get my 11 miles to the gallon <laughs> uh, and my 7.3 liter oiler, my year 2000, F-350. Oh, boy, if there was anyone that was politically correct tonight, they're not happy with me. I said the 5.5 A6, the 5.56 AK is fine. I said, I want to stand for the national anthem and the American flag at sporting events and get rid of all these other BS flags. I'm not standing for those. I'm not kneeling before the red, white, and blue. You know what I'm saying? Actually, quite frankly, just to be blunt with you guys, just so I can get one or two more people mad at me tonight, the only thing I'm kneeling before is God. That's it. I don't kneel before all this other crap. So that's why we have the 2A EDU trading card because I've been getting so frustrated with sports. My friend Clover Tech has a cool um, sports card channel, actually. And I do like that channel because, for the most part, he does a lot of older vintage stuff. And it kind of reminds me of the good old days. Check this out. I'm going to give away some of this stuff soon. I was a winner, just like I do for my channel supporters. Like how I'm trying to give out as many stickers as possible. So check those posts over on Patreon, channel members and locals, guys. And I am going to want to make sure you guys have all at least have a sticker plus some more stuff. But, yeah, man. I was a winner being a channel member of the Clover Tech channel. I won his drawing last month. and oh, He knew. He knew I liked baseball cards. So he sent me this Alan Trammell baseball card. 1988 Fleer. Back in 1988. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays, though, you go to all these sporting events. and I don't know. That's why I made the, the 2A EDU trading card. Just because. Just because you don't you don't kneel before the American flag, you don't kneel during the national anthem. When you're hanging out on this channel, I mean, you can. That's actually your freedom of speech. You can, but you're not gonna really, you're not gonna really want to do that when you're hanging out here, are you? I have quite a bit more swag in here. I'm gonna keep a couple things for myself, but because I do like to keep stuff when I get it from a friend. But I have a stack of stuff, guys, patches, stickers, whatever. So remind me, I want to send some of this stuff off to you guys because I won the the Clover Tech giveaway. And I, I, I support as many YouTubers as I can. I know there's some great channels watching right now. I just don't have the money to support everybody's, but I do what I can. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate all the hard work all of you guys do that have channels because you have to love doing this. <laughs> Because the rewards are not necessarily of the heaps of gold and 
and, and fortune and fame type. You have to do it for other reasons. All right. What other questions do I have, Linda? KMI building, Lou Whitaker. Oh, yeah. The old double play combination. I used to watch them at the old Tiger Stadium. Oh, yeah. Over on Michigan and Trumbull. And then Comerica Park after that. Now I don't even really like to go over to Detroit and all that anymore. Stuff just changed. Maybe I'm just getting old, but I don't think so. That's all right, though. Do you guys remember that guy earlier that said that he got his brother into a Taurus G3C? And that's what you guys need to be doing. Don't complain about the government because, look, we're in a culture war right now, okay? And a lot of us just want to be left alone and just want to be Americans and cling to our guns and our Bibles, like Obama said. And a lot of us are proud to be on that MVE list, but we're only going to win if you guys want to win. And that's why I do these streams, to offer encouragement. Get that new person into shooting. Once you've done that, or before, or during, just feel it out. These are the people you know and trust, right? And they trust and know you. Start teaching them about the Second Amendment. Start teaching them about natural rights and liberty. And that's our hope. And there is a lot of hope there, guys. I'm not saying like, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Look, there's a lot of hope in this. And that is our hope. Am I the smartest person you're watching right now? Maybe, maybe not, probably not. But that's my plan. We have to win the culture. And when we can win the culture... Those politicians will buckle like the cheap suits they're all wearing. Trust me. Politics is downstream from culture. Make guns cool again. Make America cool again. We'll get it. But we can't be silenced by the FBI and make us afraid to say 2A. That's why I have this logo I do have. And that's why I'm trying to get as much of this stuff out as I possibly can. Joe Morgan, what's happening, dude? Thank you for being so patient, man. You know how I am. I'm kind of spontaneous and go off on rants and it's hard when I literally want to sit here and talk to all of you guys one-on-one -on -one and there's like, I don't know, probably like almost 200 people watching right now and I can't keep up. But anyways, what's your favorite Taurus model? Oh, geez. Another one. Ugh. This is tough. My favorite is so Joe's favorite is the G3 and favorite revolver is the old model four. Okay. Let me say the revolver one to get that out of the way. I have an old production Old by Taurus' standard. 40 years. A lot of you guys, I sent supporters those Taurus books. Okay? I'm going to give away a few more of those in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Alan LeBlanc. Just, just be an American. And just remember, all these symbols and 2A, this is deeply rooted in the history of America. The Second Amendment is America. So just stay strong. Don't hide from representing the Second Amendment. We can't do it. Okay. I have an old model Taurus 82, 38 special. I like it. I like it. Very, very nice. Essentially, almost a Smith & Wesson Model 10. I mean, pretty much, right? Let's just let's just call it what it is. And there was a partnership between those two companies. Not that Taurus owned them or they owned Taurus, but there was a parent company that had a stake in both of them at one point, and Taurus did gain access to that tooling. That's pretty well known. But that's a good thing, though. The Smith & Wesson Model 10. I'm sure there's a lot of fans of that. Of that revolver in here. You know what I'm saying? Um, so the 82. I do have a new Taurus revolver here that I'm going to be reviewing soon. And we'll let you know. Maybe it'll be my new favorite. I don't know yet. Okay, gosh. Okay, real quick. For the semi-autos. And this is really tough. That's why I'm avoiding this question. <laughs> All of them? No, that's not a good answer. Okay. So my favorite is my original G2C. First Taurus gun I ever bought was a Model 85, followed by a Rossi Taurus 20-gauge shotgun. It actually says Taurus on it. It's a Taurus Rossi. Anyway, same company. The first semi-auto I bought when this channel was just getting going, really, was the Taurus G2C. And that's my favorite one, and here's why. So just hold on, guys. Because the G3C is an improvement over the G2C, in my opinion. And, but it's still a great gun. It's because that gun had like, I don't know, tens of thousands of views, which was crazy at that time for me. Because if I got 100 views on a video, I was like, whoa, you know, wow, 100 people wanted to watch this. 
And that is a lot. If you guys have channels and you have 100 people watching your video, awesome. Keep up the good fight. Just keep being you. You got to work hard, though. If you want your channel to grow, there's no magic. There's no whatever. You just got to do it. And if you're having a good time and you're or and or you're providing good information or motivating people or doing all three, and there's other people that like what you're doing and have a good time or learn information, it'll grow. But you got to work hard no matter what. So if you're getting 100 views on your videos right now, that's a lot. You should be proud of what you're doing and just keep working harder if you want more than that. Now, I, I was honored back then to get 100 views, and I still am, actually. If I got 100 views on a video, it's like, cool. Now, this video blew up to like 75,000 views or something, and a lot of you guys found my channel due to Torres. And, like, you guys are all the reason I'm still here. And I met, like, some of the awesomest friends, patriots, cool chicks, dudes, like, so since I met so many awesome people through that original G2C, that's my favorite no matter what. Like literally, I'll never sell it and won't even think about it because if I didn't buy that gun and I didn't do that review, I wouldn't know a good portion of you guys right here. And I would have never done all the other Taurus videos because I thought they were junk guns. And I bought the gun, new warranty, is it worth the hype? Go back and check my Taurus playlist, which now has over 100 Taurus videos on it. I bought it because I thought all these YouTubers were lying and it would totally suck. And I basically got it to be like, look, guys, I'm just a regular dude with like a couple hundred subscribers. You know I'm just going to tell you the truth. I realize that's a fallacy. There's people with like almost no subscribers that lie about almost everything. And there's guys with millions of subscribers that are some of the most honest reviews you'll ever find. None of that means anything. But back then, I thought that. And some of you guys might think that now. So I'm like, no, I'm going to get out here and I'm going to give a real review. This thing has to be crap. And from the initial review going forward, it wasn't crap. And the gun still functioned like flawlessly for me ever since. And I still shoot it from time to time. And that's why I gave all these other Taurus pistols the time of day. And met so many good people through doing those videos. Now, remove all of that aside. If you just want to talk about just like strictly the tool itself, love the GX4. Like crazy. Like it's an all new design pistol. It's not a different version of some. No, dude. Like the GX4, it's a chassis gun. I love it. I have a couple versions in the carry routine. My wife has a brand new one in the box that we got to get out and shoot. Always shoot your gun when it's brand new especially with the ammo you're going to carry. I always preach on that, guys. You have to do it. I want to see good people protecting themselves, not having a failure to feed because whatever hollow point you had it, you guys know what I'm saying. Break that gun in a little bit, as much as you can afford to. So, yeah, the GX4, it kind of knocks my socks off. How much, how much I just love it. I love the trigger for carry. The recoil is very smooth for such a teeny 9 millimeter and all of that. So there's my answers. And, and, yeah, tell me how you guys found the channel. I can't keep track of all of this stuff 100% in real time, but I do read all of these afterwards. So you're not wasting your time. I'm not blowing you off. Davi85, for example. What's happening, man? Yeah, Forge Tech. I love their holsters. I do. Small Michigan-based business here. Love them. Basically, that JM4 Tactical leather holster, magnetic, which I love. I'll show you guys that stuff on the local stream tomorrow night because – it's a gray area. Look, the rules don't prohibit me from lifting a holster up, but the AI or maybe someone working at YouTube right now, they're enjoying the stream. Just imagine this. Some YouTube employee might be watching this. They're enjoying the stream. They just ain't into guns so much. They see a holster. They might not know what it is. I'm not going to pick up holsters right now, but I love my JM4 Tactical Magnetic Leather Holster. Pretty much every other holster I own is a Forge Tech. Totally love them. And if you guys are Forge Tech fans, He's going to be coming to my hangout in the in November in Michigan too. So you guys can time how much you like his holsters. Um, what's the one you had pinned, Linda? Do you still have access to that one? I hope you didn't lose it. Like right as she pinned that previous comment, I wanted to throw the one from um, Davi85 up. And that was like totally rude to the other person that just left a comment. Can you still find that, Linda? Please? Sorry. Thank you. Like, that might have given the appearance I just did the rudest thing ever. Like, I was literally in the process of clicking. And when you're doing stuff over the internet, there's just like a little bit of a lag, right? So, see if you can find the, um, see if you can find that question. And let's keep the questions going. Linda, if you could, please. 
Oh, Jay's Clover Tech just said he found it when he was dumpster diving here on YouTube. No, you never know what you're going to find on YouTube, and that is true. I found some great channels I was least expecting, and I found all sorts of everything. You can find whatever you want or whatever you don't want here on YouTube. That's, why, that's what's great about it. Some people are like, hold on a minute. You just said this. You just said you actually do approve of a 556AK. Five, five, well, there's probably a channel out there that doesn't approve of it. And that might be their new favorite channel. But here's the thing. The guy that's like, I'm gone. You said the fight. They'll be back. We're still friends. They got mad. They went over there. They went over to the other channel that, that only had a 762 by 39 AK. Okay. But then he had a Glock, and they hate Glocks. And then they come back. You know you know how it goes. That's just, <laughs> I'm just razzing you guys. <coughs> There's always been caliber controversies, though, in the gun community. <laughs> there probably always will be. But we'll just try to have fun with it. Marco Polo with another super chat. Thanks, man, for being a channel member. He says, good night. Well, good night, dude. Locals tomorrow night will be fun. Yes. My local streams tend to be a little bit later, kick off, maybe 10, 10, 30 Eastern time, but they're only for an hour. So definitely come hang out over there. It's a good way you can support the channel for extra perks or be a total free member and get like tons of extra content. And you can actually be a free member over there and support the channel totally for free too. You'll see what I mean when you go over there. And just because they have different policies than YouTube does. We do a little bit different things there. When I'm in YouTube's house, I could either in protest shut my channel down. I don't want to do that because, like, I'm getting to hang out with you guys right now. So we do what we do here because they have rules. And it is what it is, what it is, what it is. And I could rant for two hours straight. That's why I'm on a couple different platforms, though. Susan doesn't care what I do over there. Here's the thing. Susan did. I, I'll tell you guys this real quick. I must confess, okay? She waltzed in. You guys can picture this, right? Picture somebody not walking in, not even strolling in. She waltzed in in my locals community one day. I looked at her and I said, what are you doing here? Hmm. Well, I mean, it wasn't a big surprise what she was doing. And I said, you know what? I gave you a chance, girl. We still hang out on YouTube. I mean, Susan and I are having the best. I mean, we're the best of friends and having a great relationship here right now. And we love all of her rules about not touching guns on live streams, don't we? But I said, sorry, girl, enough's enough. We can still be friends, but not so much. You missed your chance, darling, and get out. And I went to look for her. I'm like, where is she at? And I already saw the door hit. Boom, just like that. I looked up, and Mateo was standing there. United States Marine. Um, hey, I'm not saying he did anything bad to her. He didn't hurt her, but let's just say this. she, There's a dent in the door, the shape of a behind, you know what I'm saying? In the other side of the door. She's not over there. Hi, Susan. Um, James Kawasaki with the super chat and a channel member. Thanks, James. I appreciate your support, dude. Another good Michigan person, right? Or no, you're Ohio, but you hang out in Michigan. Well, he's a guy that's been fighting the Patriot fight here in Michigan. He says, stand for freedom. Kneel before God. Much love all. Thank you, man. Thank you for that encouragement. Hopefully some of you guys find some encouragement there. Look, I'm not going to judge you guys' soul, okay? You don't answer to me what your religion is, but I'm going to speak for myself, and I'm not going to be ashamed of it. I'll kneel before God. I'm not kneeling before the United States flag. Vito, thanks, man. Thanks for the super chat. Do you have a, um, do you have a patch, Vito? Whose addresses do we have, Linda? I want to get a. I, I want every supporter. I'm going to put out posts just so you guys know over on Patreon, channel members, locals. Make sure all the supporters have one of these for sure. But I want to get a few more patches out to some of these people that have really, really helped keep this channel going. Um, he says, hey, 2A, since I gave 10, can I get a case of 9 millimeter? LOL, great stream tonight. Okay, no more, no more. We were going to. Eh. No, make, make sure Vito's got a patch. Um, he says, no, he doesn't. We do have your address, right? Linda helps me with all this stuff. So um, I don't know whose address we have and don't. Make sure you email if we don't. If you already know she has it. Can you do that for me, Linda? Add that to your list, okay? 
pick one. She'll pick a patch. I have several different versions of it. Thanks for the super chat, man. All right. Any more questions? I've been going an hour and 35 minutes. Do you guys like this? I want to kind of get into some history and some more heavy duty stuff next week. I do. I was going to do it this week, but I'm like, you know what? We're missing a golden opportunity because the FBI and their list, right? Yeah. I did a stream when that first broke, Friday, Thursday. See, us YouTubers do these streams, and then the United States senators find out about it the next day. I'm telling you guys, this is what's called the culture war. So we come out here. Various size channels, small ones like mine, bigger ones like, you know, Guns and Gadgets, Legally Armed America, both friends of mine. Paul's a great dude. Jared's a great dude. Like, here's the thing. I don't care if you guys like their channel or not, because I always want you guys to do you. I'm just talking the actual people. I've spent time talking to Jared face to face. Very, very nice person. I really like that man a lot. Paul Glasgow, same thing. Was walking around with him and our friend Such. Down there, we were having kind of a three, four-way conversation. Robbie Wheaton, awesome people down there. So, and I do mean that. These are my friends, and they're really, really nice people, and I'm saying that totally aside of their channels. Then us YouTubers come out here, small channels, medium channels, big channels, super small channels, whatever. Who cares? And then the United States senators find out about it the next day. Tell me that politics isn't downstream from culture. I know there's someone out there really stubborn right now. And you're like, but I want to be black pilled. You can wake up and be black pilled tomorrow. Tonight we're offering encouragement. We're saying no FBI. The 2A, that's normal. You're the extremist if you want to put me on a list. Tonight we're just having some fun, right? You guys can wake up black pilled tomorrow. I can already hear it coming in the comment section tomorrow. Lexington Green. Look, I get it. No, tonight we're talking about the actual battle that's in front of us right now. And you guys are always giving me good ideas. You guys may have a way better plan than me, but I still want to stick to this right now. Politics is downstream from culture, period. Primary elections matter still, okay? I can say a lot about elections, but not on YouTube, okay? And it's our right. And it's our duty. There you guys go. And this is all part of it. And I'm getting in a good mood about some of this. I think about this. YouTubers. Some dude sitting in his landscape shop. The other dude, he's got his studio up in one of his second bedrooms of his house. I'm thinking of guns and gadgets. Sometimes he's out there sitting on his porch real quick because the kids are being too loud, right? Sometimes he's out wherever. You'll have like legally armed America out there. Sometimes he's out and about. Sometimes he's in his little, when I say studio, these are in all of our different homes or shops or whatever. We talk about this stuff and then boom. Then the United States Senate. Then Ted Cruz is grilling the FBI director. And I think that this is our only chance. And I think we're actually doing an okay job. Lots of terrible stuff going on. Before you even think I'm naive, trust me. I could get as black-pilled as any of you. But every once in a while, it's nice to just sit and look for some answers. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm seeing some stuff I like right now, okay? I really am. Um, so we have Lucid Physics. Spot a little weird. It says, what do you think about the Sig Sauer M18? You know, this goes back to this again. I know there's tons of Sig fans out there. I don't have any experience with that one. I really don't. So I don't I don't want to blow you off that quick, but I really don't know much about that pistol. I don't have one. Certainly can't have them all. You know what I mean? I don't know. Chat, help me out with the Sig, the SIG M18. Maybe one of you guys can throw your two cents in. And I don't know. Sorry. I don't know much about that pistol at all, to be honest with you. I probably could literally talk about hundreds of guns, though. Like I know a lot about a lot of guns. There's just so many. There's like hundreds of thousands, probably millions of models. All right. What else have we got, Linda? 
What's happening, Ron Wayne? How you doing, man? Thanks for being a channel supporter. He said, question, is it true when the lights go out, Lamy patrols the shop in his half track with the safety off? Absolutely. <laughs> I didn't quite shout out all my sponsors tonight, did I? Ron Wayne. Now, I like Ron Wayne, but let's just call a spade a spade. His better half, okay? Mrs. Misty Wayne. Hopefully, she's hanging out tonight. She's the sponsor of this Let's Go Brandon decal. I sent quite a few of these and many of her awesome decals out to a bunch of you guys. So let's go, Brandon. And Lamy's official sponsorship. Now, Lamy himself came from my friend Ray. And it was one of those things where it wasn't easy for me to, like, physically get possession of Lamy. But possession's nine-tenths of the law, and that's why Lamy's been with this channel for the last few years. She said she wants to come on and do a hangout live stream soon, so... As soon as her and I, uh, my schedules can kind of, we'll probably do a fun stream here soon. So for those of you that miss my friend Ray, she misses you guys soon too. And she said she wants to come on soon. So we'll see. I don't know if it's soon, like next week or in a month, but we talk quite a bit. We're good friends still. And it's just life. We're just, everyone's so busy and schedules. and But yeah. So Lami came from my friend Ray, my friend Rachel. Some of you guys know who she is if you've been around the channel for a while. Pillbox Bunker, the official sponsor for Lamy's half track. And oh, yeah, cock locked, ready to rock. See, Lamy rides both sides of the fence. He's got a mod deuce up front. All right. He's got a M1917 right next to him at about his, well, he's kind of pivoted right there in the cockpit. So I guess it'd be at about his three o'clock. And then he's got a Kalash, an original milled variant Kalashnikov hanging there, a shotgun. I mean, duffel bags. Look, there's a reason nobody messes with me. And for those of you that didn't know why, well, hold on, I get it. The easy, just look at me. Of course no one would mess with me. No, 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 that's not it. Obviously, look right there. Mommy, half track, my deuce. I meant what I said. Any infantry veterans that want to tell us how sweet it is to shoot a my deuce, go ahead. If you didn't already earlier, I can take it. Could you guys imagine what it'd be like to shoot a 50 caliber machine gun? Ah, what do you think, Ron Wayne? Mommy well, does every night, though. They come here. All these people from the other side, they come to the shop, they try to whatever, and I don't know. If a mod deuce, here's a question. Here's a philosophical question. Are there any philosophers in the house? Here's my premise for this. If a tree falls in the woods, and there's no one there to, to hear it. It falls in the woods, there's no one there to hear it. Does it make a sound? You've all heard that. All right. If I'm gone, everybody's gone, and somebody's prowling around the shop, and a full auto my deuce goes off. But Lamy already took care of all the problems, took out the trash. By the time I get back, and he did such a good job cleaning it up, I didn't even know what happened. Did anything happen? If Lamy's my deuce goes off in this shop just ripping to take care of all enemies, foreign and domestic, were there even any enemies at the shop? Answer that question if you can. Were there any enemies at the shop? I don't think so. What do you think, Baron Talk? You know, different strokes for different folks. You guys ever hear that one song? I'm not going to start, start citing song lyrics, but hey, I'm a little bit too silly for Aaron LeBlanc. I think Alan's joking with me. You're probably joking, right, Alan? What he meant to say is, I'm glad you're having some fun, dude. Like, look, we just had an assault weapons man pass the house. We're not having fun and being complacent. I talked to the, hopefully my next state rep, Jamie Thompson, on the phone for 30 minutes today, 35 minutes. I texted my current state rep, hopefully my next state senator, texted him today. Talk to my friend Rob about two-way. Talk to my friend John Crump about some stuff today. I put in some time today on the two-way and all that. But sometimes I just want to have a little fun and joke around a little bit. I don't know. If the mod deuce went off in the middle of the night, hmm, did it go off at all? And did it make a sound? No one was here to hear it. Gort, thanks for the question, man. Thanks for being a channel supporter. 
AK receivers, milled versus stamped, pros and cons. Um, both I like a lot. The pros are, look, how do I word this? Because there's multiple things that are both true that might look to contradict each other. In theory, a milled receiver is more robust, okay? And that's not even really anything you can debate. A chunk of milled steel is more robust than a riveted stamp sheet model receiver. But in real life, when it really comes down to it, the stamped receivers are robust enough, very robust. The stamped is going to be lighter generally. Now, here's the problem. There's so many variants of AKs. I could go on rabbit holes for hours because the Chinese AKs, heavier profile barrel, even the stamp, still were basically made as a stamped AK-47 clone, not AKM. If you look at the way they... If you look at the vetted gas tube rather than the vetted gas block, the thicker profile barrel, okay, the thicker stamp sheet metal receiver, Yugoslavia, variants all in and of themselves with the bulge trunnions in many cases, thicker stamp sheet metal receivers. So generally, a milled AK is heavier than a stamped. If you were looking at a Russian AK-47 versus AKM, which is the modernized Kalashnikov rifle, right? And it actually talks about a little of the history right here. On the on back of the 2A EDU trading card, AKM, Kalashnikov's automatic rifle modernized, developed 1950s to replace AK-47, stamped sheet metal receiver, produced 1959 to 1977 in the USSR, the factories, Tula and Azhevs, more than 10 million, produced by numerous countries and counting, okay? Generally, you could say a mill is a little heavier and a little heavier duty. Generally, you could say a stamped sheet metal receiver is not quite as heavy duty, but lighter. Uh, as far as like the practicalities of buying one, you're going to find way more accessories, furniture that's going to fit the AKM than you will the milled or the Yugo. Generally, a milled is going to cost more money. Generally, a milled is going to be smoother for the action if you care about that in your AK. I care, but I don't care. I have some nice milled AKs, and I love how buttery smooth they are. But I don't care either because my AK doesn't have to be smooth. So hopefully that answers it. And I just barely scratched the surface. All right. What else do we have? I saw we had a new channel member that just joined. Can you find that for me real quick, Linda? I don't know if we can see that here on um, Angry Fat Boy. Just became a channel member. Thank you. I think you've been a member here in the past, maybe. I know a supporter over on Locals for sure. Thanks for becoming a member, dude. And Jacob Ladd just became a channel member. Thank you. Um, make sure you guys check those posts. I'm going to make a post that reminds you guys of what email address to get the sticker. And you already have access right now, for example, Jacob. Angry Fat Boy's had access to a while for a while because he's a local supporter as well. But scroll through my community post. Maybe you're around the area and want to watch that quick video on RSVP to my hangout this fall, for example, right? Um, AIC with a super chat. Thank you, AIC. I appreciate it. Says support for my fellow 2A citizen. Well, thank you. And make sure you still display the 2A. Um, uh, make sure you email. Can you throw that in there one more time, Linda? That 2A EDU perks. Just give her your username. Say I'm AIC. Any of you guys that super chatted tonight, okay? If you super chatted tonight, you don't have one of these, or even if you do and you just need another one, um, email. Give us your username just so Linda can check it real quick because I can't afford to give like thousands of these out, but I'm trying to hook up as many of you as I can. Um, email us. Make sure you end up with a sticker or whatnot. Who knows what Linda will throw in there for you. She'll be cool. 2A EDU trading card if you're into that. I don't know. Thank you. Uh, Mitch R. with a question. Thoughts on UPS ammo missing? For my exact thoughts on that, make sure you watch the video that I literally just put out on my channel day before yesterday. <coughs> people, Some people got mad at me for that, too. Oh, well. Oh, they got mad. Let me on. Uh, no. <laughs> thoughts on it. I literally did a whole video. So go watch that video, and you can see my thoughts on that. I don't know. I will make one comment, though. That reminds me. Tons of people in the comments, and I totally get it because there's voting with your pen. There's voting in culture. There's voting with your pocketbook, with your dollar, 
right? With your feet. Remember, we have the right to peaceably assemble. Where's all the two-way rallies? I'm just saying. But you can vote with your pocketbook. All right. A lot of people said, well, don't do business with UPS. Okay, fine. And then a lot of people said, this guy deserves this. If his ammo is not showing up, he deserves it. I don't know. To each his own, and you guys are certainly entitled to that opinion to have that. I, I disagree, though, and here's why. Deserve. Or he got what's coming to him. Hmm. The only thing really guaranteed in life is you're going to be born and you'll die. So if people want to get to the epitome of what you deserve, I'm probably a lot more conservative on that than a lot of people are just by their talking points. You don't really deserve a whole lot if you want to use the true essence of what the word means. However, however, I think the way people mean it is he got what was coming to him. Well, no, not really, because when you enter into an arrangement and they advertise that they ship ammo and you pay for that, you've now formed a business relationship. No, you don't deserve to have your ammo lost because just think about this. If you guys all stop doing business everywhere, and you should vote with your dollar. Don't mistake anything I'm saying here. You wouldn't be able to buy anything. Tons of businesses are anti-two-way. Just realize that. I'm not sticking up for UPS at all. I think they're despicable in my opinion. Okay? I don't like them. Period. End of story. But there's only like a couple common carriers that you can even ship ammo from. And this stuff just goes in so many circles, and. I either have the advantage of seeing this with how many comments I get and from all my videos, or you could call it a disadvantage. It's kind of a curse, too. It really is. I hear the gun community go, this man deserves to have his ammo lost, or he got what was coming to him or something. Go back and read the comments. You guys will see a few different variations of that to a higher or lesser, somewhat adjacent extent. I'll just say that of what I'm saying right now. Okay. But then I see anytime I talk about ammo, the gun community is really, really cheap as a whole. It just is. Many good reasons why, maybe some not so good reasons why. I'm not even going to get into that. I don't care right now. It just, it is a very, very cheap community. And all I hear is people ranting and raving saying, this company ripped me off and their shipping was too much. UPS is the cheapest shipping. They advertise they ship ammo. When the man pays them to ship his ammo, I don't think he deserves to have it go missing. Now, should he maybe be looking into a better solution and not giving his money to a place that's so anti-gun? Yes, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. But what's the options out there? There's FedEx that costs for ground shipments almost twice as much, and then it goes right back into that rhetorical circle of the gun community is cheap, it's cheap, it's cheap, it's cheap, it's cheap. And one of the main things I get from the gun community is complaining about everything. And they complain about nothing more than how much everything costs. And I understand why we're mad about how much everything costs. <laughs> it's very, very hard to afford to live at all, period, right now. But it is kind of a, a circular thing at the end of the day. And I don't know what the I don't know what the actual answer is, okay? But there is two sides to the story. And if you use a more expensive shipping method, the gun community is going to pounce all over an ammo distributor and say, it's too expensive. I don't know. I don't know. And here's the kicker that makes it even more convoluted. A lot of the people that work on the ground level of UPS are actually pretty cool people. My UPS driver that I've had for years. I've hung out with him in real life. Like, in other words, not just saying hi to him when he drops off my whatever, ammo, whatever you can think of. I've actually hung out with him outside of work. Super pro 2A guy, super big gun guy. So every person that works for UPS isn't bad either. And I'm not going to try to say FedEx is good either. So I guess I said a lot in that other video, but you did provide me a chance to kind of I don't know. I'm not quarreling with people that say that kind of stuff. Maybe I just have a different way of looking at it because I do get to see so much of, of, of both sides of the equation. And the gun community will complain like crazy. Will complain like crazy. 
if all of these companies switch to a different shipper and their shipping and handling goes up twice. Mm. Ugh, right? Stop stealing crap, people. <laughs> if I had to guess, and I'm just guessing, I don't want to defame anyone. I'm guessing there's probably people working there stealing it. If I had to just guess. And I think there's an anti-gun culture with UPS. I believe that. And it sucks. Big time. And I'm not sticking up for UPS whatsoever. Just trust me. Just realize there's that other side of the coin with it. All right, Linda. We've been on for almost two hours. Do I have any last minute questions I need to get to? Um. Okay, so... Just Hobbies one says I've been buying 762 by 39 ammo because of the good prices. Right on, dude. We could be good friends, man. Talking about buying lots of 762 by 39. I've bought a lot of it in my life. It used to be so so cheap. Mid 90s. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I digress. My question is how much ammo is too much ammo? Okay. So the obvious question is there's never enough ammo. How much is enough? Uh, one more box than you already have, but then you repeat yourself. So when you buy that one more box, just go back and repeat. One more box, one more. Okay, that's the answer. Reasonably, if you're paying your bills, taking care of your family, doing what you need to do, when you've got that disposable income and you have quote enough, I don't know. I have a lot more faith in metals, even if it's steel case, but lead and even if it's not a real copper jacket, a copper wash jacket. I have more faith in this as a commodity. No financial advice, by the way, for any fab boys listening. I have more faith in this as a commodity in many cases than I do a piece of paper by a corporation that prints money for the United States that isn't the government at all, the corporation of the Federal Reserve, right? I have more faith in this, and it has more utility purpose. Then a piece of paper, because I also have read the history of the Weimar Republic when they burned money because the amount of BTUs a bale of money would make at one point when they had such bad hyperinflation, okay? The amount of money it would take to equal the BTUs of a log of firewood, you couldn't buy the log of firewood. I might have said that weird. It was cheaper to burn the money for heat than to buy firewood at one time in the Weimar Republic in Germany. Around 100 years ago-ish. I'm not saying that's going to happen here right now. I'm just trying to say I like, <laughs> I feel more comfortable, okay? Now I have to use the United States dollar to pay my bills, do all these things. You guys donating your generous dollars in the many ways you guys have tonight, you guys do all the time. That's awesome. I will use those to buy things with dollars for the channel. Hopefully it's a win-win for all of us. I get it. We need money. But I don't know if any of you guys agree with me or not, but I feel more comfortable looking at a case of ammo than I do a couple pieces of paper that, who knows, it's printed by a corporation. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a little bit, I could get on a big Federal Reserve rant really, really fast right now, but I mean, I worked really hard for this, guys. Really, really hard. Like... I know you guys do too. But let's just say this. I like the look of six boxes of this stacked up, okay? I don't have enough hands. I've got some more over here. Just humor me. Pretend there's six of these. I don't know. I like the looks of a... Is that a good answer? If you can afford it, make sure you're storing it properly. Steel case ammo. Let me show you this real quick here. Here's a 760 by 39 round I keep right here for these purposes. It rolled off my desk, concrete floor in the shop, went up against the wall. Basement might not be the best place. I did a whole video for any of you guys that are new. Go check it out. I, I tried to put as much information as I can. It was called Ammo Storage or How to Store Your Ammo. It's on my YouTube channel here. And I, I'm a big fan of the desiccant packs, the ammo cans, all that. So if you can afford to store it properly, as much as you want, man. You know, how much do you shoot? There's never just one answer for this stuff. But I think it's a good discussion once in a while that people are interested in. I have one in this envelope. So I was like, do I have any cash on me right now? I've got one. Federal Reserve know what it's called. 
You like to talk about that band talk. Do you care to let us know about? No, we're almost done now. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I ain't trying to get you off on that rant. Dear band talk, my friend, do you care to let us know about the Federal Reserve? Uh, I, I watch band talks live streams, and I already kind of know the answer to that. What's happening, Marksman TV? Nice to see you, dude. We're just hanging out tonight, Marksman TV, talking to the, talking to everybody. We're just talking about. The guy that just got his brother into his first gun, becoming a Second Amendment supporter. We're talking about the fact that the FBI may not, look, they want to try to say that we're MVEs, militia, violent extremists, because we represent the 2A. No, we're just here reminding each other that they're lying and they're wrong. And the Second Amendment is one of the founding principles of this country. So we're just talking about the fact that we're in a civil war. It's a cultural civil war. And that we're going to win because there's a lot of good people. A lot of good people joining this community, right? And I'm answering all kinds of random questions tonight. Okay, we're going to get this one and maybe one more. And then I'm going to have to jump off here because it's getting a little late. Yeah, Randy Smith, until the wife yells at you. There you go. That's the good answer. Just listen to Randy Smith. He's probably right. <laughs> um, Jay Turner. No, no, do what you want. Who cares about what your wife says? There you guys go. Somebody, you buy as much as you want. Here's the thing. If she kicks you out, whatever. You can use it for shelter. If you buy enough ammo, you can literally build a shelter with it. You're good. All right, Jay Turner. Went to buy a semi-shoddy today in Maryland at local FFL. Now, that sounds like that could be a, doggy, a dog and pony show in and of itself. I know it sucks with the restrictions over there. Okay, repeat customer. Came back delayed. Shop said they had eight delayed applications, all repeat customers in one day. Any insight as to why? True insight, no, because this is all secret. It's all, like, we'll never be able to know. I will tell you this, though. In Michigan, CPL used to make you exempt from a background check and still the Michigan State Police messed up really bad. And then they tried to take it out on us, or they did take it out on us. So for the longest time, I never had to have background checks. Okay, then I did. And I don't know, probably did 100 transfers in a couple of years. Now, that's a lot. But also keep in mind, you know, when we talk about like T&E stuff, sometimes they send you the gun. You review it. Then they're like, do you want to buy it for a discount? Sometimes you do, but you can't afford all of them all the time. So then they'll send you a prepaid shipping label. You can send it back. So those are still NICS checks. Those are still transfers. Whether you're going to physically own that gun the rest of your life or not, doesn't matter. It is, if I'm going to be in possession of it, if it's transferred to me, NICS check. I probably had 100 NICS checks in a row over a couple of years and never got a delay. Just instant proceed. Now the last three or four times I've gone delayed every single time. Usually as quick as just a few minutes, 15 minutes. I think the longest delay was 30 minutes. I don't know, man. I don't know why. I have suspicions. I don't think it's on the up and up. I think it's not too much of a coincidence that right around the time that they're putting out this memo saying that, if you have one of these stickers and you want to support it or hat or just whatever, Betsy Ross flag, don't tread on me flag. If you talk about Waco or Ruby Ridge, you're allegedly an extremist. From the terrorism division of the FBI, that comes out. Then the whole thing where, oh, wait a minute. We had an appropriations bill with gun control snuck into it. Go back and watch my video again, March 12th. Okay. You guys saw that video, right? I just put out. And I reminded you guys, I put out a video of March 12th. I'm like, gun control just passed, and most people don't even know it happened. Okay? The next denial reporting, which denial means one very specific thing, and delayed means something very different <laughs> than denied. And I don't have the numbers, but the vast, vast, vast majority, it's probably like 99 point something percent. I'm saying probably because I don't have numbers in front of me. Probably 99.9999, something like such a big number. Virtually all people who get delayed end up getting a proceed later. The law said denied. Okay, but this just goes to show there is no such thing as a compromised gun control bill. No, they now say, well, hold on a minute. 
the 24 hours it takes for us to be able to report this denied person or delayed person, we wouldn't possibly. This is literally what they're asserting. Okay, we wouldn't possibly have time to call the gun shop and get the person's phone number or address. Just did my next check two days ago. Delayed. They called back Supermatch DNA, I don't know, minutes later. He picked up the phone. They can call your gun shop back minutes later. Literally provable. If your gun shop does phone background checks. They call them back after a delay. It's provable they can call them back. It takes them minutes. One time I was delayed. He hung up the phone. It was already ringing. He assumed it was a customer. It was already that Nick's agent on the phone. I was already approved that fast. They claim, though, they can't. They can't call you back within a day. So, therefore, they have to also lump delayed people in with denied. In my opinion... You can believe in coincidence to a point, but how much do you want to believe in coincidence? That's up for all of you guys. I think that's wrong. Okay? On so many levels. And I did a pretty long video talking about it quite a bit. My friend Marksman TV did a video about it. Taking it from a little different angle, from a different vantage point. And um, watch both of our videos if you guys want to know more. His is probably better than mine. Go watch his first, then mine, both, whatever. And I think between the two of our videos, you guys probably will be kind of in the loop on that. Just check my channel. It's one of my most recent videos. I think, dude, it's just there's all of this. It could be because there's just not enough Nick's agents working that day. It could be because if your name's Jay Turner, I don't know your real name, but let's just say it's John Turner or Justin Turner or whatever. Super common last name. Maybe you're Justin Turner, okay, minding your own business, and then there's a Justin Turner that just committed a felony a couple days ago in the town next door. Things can change like that, right? I don't know. But there are there are things like that that can happen. Sometimes I'm almost convinced it's like, dude, it's their lunch break. It's their smoke break. It's their whatever. And they're like, I don't feel like this. Delay. I'm going to go outside and have a drink, have a whatever, shoot some dogs, whatever they do. Let me go. You know, they're sitting there. They're like, I haven't shot a dog yet today. Hold on, Jay Turner. Earth, earth. All right. Whew. They come back to their desk. You guys know what I'm saying, right? I mean, that is what originally kicked it off at Ruby Ridge. It started off with them shooting the dog, and we're not supposed to talk about Ruby Ridge, which is why I am right now. We're not supposed to talk about it. Oh, I wonder why, FBI. Because your sniper murdered a woman with a baby in her arms? Oh, that's why. Okay. This is all connected, Jay Turner. Just remember what I said earlier. Truth is treason in the empire of lies. These people are liars. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with supporting the Second Amendment. Or reminding people about Ruby Ridge. Now, there's many, many factors. I believe in coincidence to a point. And then after all, I'm like, nah, nah. Probably just trying to frustrate the crap out of you, dude. If you, This is just in my opinion. No legal advice. There you go. I gave you 10 logical reasons why. But I think this administration is just trying to frustrate the crap out of all of you right now. But here's the thing, though. More and more of us are getting into guns, though. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh Cheers from Idaho, James Jam says. Well, cheers from Michigan, man. James Jams, cheers from Idaho. Anyone else out there? I know it's not a super popular state, but beautiful part of the country, I've been told. That's kind of in your neck of the woods, right, Band Talk? Maybe you and James know each other. I don't know. That's like saying I know everyone from Ohio. I get it. I do know lots of good people from Ohio actually in here right now. Definitely know some people in Ohio. Gort, you're in Ohio, aren't you? Pretty sure you are. I think James Kawasaki's more of an Ohioan, aren't you? I, I I almost called you a Michiganian dude earlier, James, but that was that was me giving you props. You you've hung out in Michigan. You don't care for the Michigan governor, do you? <laughs> He's like, dude, you really had to ask me that. Who likes the Michigan governor right now? Before we get out of here. 
If there's one more breaking question, I'll take one more, Linda, and then I'm going to get out of here because it's getting a little late, and I appreciate Mateo does tons of work in here. He's calling it a night right now, as he just said. Linda helps me a lot, and I don't want to take advantage of their kindness. So good night, Mateo. George D., what's the best one to six optic? Oh, boy. Um, I think the best deal right now, it might be the one by four. It might be the one by six. There's a Vortex, okay? I posted on local several times. It was a pretty darn good deal at PSA. Do you mean just best, best? I don't know. Maybe one that a lot of people like. I would check out some of Swamp Fox's offerings. A lot of people like Vortex, okay, for a good bang for the buck. Strike Eagle, if you're familiar with that, I'd look into that. Heard lots of um, lots of good feedback. All right. I'm just taking a real quick peek here. What's happening, D.B. Cooper? Data? What's happening, Data? Pillbox Bunker. What's happening, dude? <laughs> Sticks and stones may break my bones, but being called an MVE will not hurt me. At 2AEDU. Are you still watching, Jeremy? We need to get – remind me tomorrow. I'm going to see Jeremy tomorrow. Make sure we get Pillbox another 2A. We need to have him – you know what I'm saying. So he can get it on another ammo cam. Look, if all you guys were literally right here in town, like I could see you tomorrow, I would give every one of you a sticker. I just can't afford to ship them all. It's too expensive. Postage stamp is what, like a couple hundred bucks nowadays it seems like? Yes, I will post that PSA Vortex deal again over on Locals, the one Gort's talking about. That way, if you guys like one, it's a win-win, and I'll help you guys find it. But, yeah, George D., tell me you're joking. Okay, who's hotter, Tudor Dixon or, or Gretchen Whitmer? That's what this is going to come down to. Linda, who's not showing herself on camera, she's the hottest, but what do you think? Gretchen Whitmer versus Tudor Dixon. Who's the hottest governor candidate in Michigan? Now, I already said this earlier. Gretchen Whitmer, oh, boy. She's a real beauty in a different kind of way. And I think Tudor, she's Tudor Dixon, I don't know. Like I said to Yellow Dog way earlier in this stream, I'm reserving on her right now. I'm just not sure. But she's pretty cute, though. She's a lot better looking than Gretchen. So, Yeah, I just don't ship them UPS. I'm not going to do that, dude. USPS, right? Like that gets any USPS? United States Postal Service of the government? Yeah, I'm I don't know, dude. That was funny, Jeff. Thanks, St. Vicari. Thanks, man. Thanks for being a channel supporter. Richard Monder, what's happening, dude? Oh, geez, oh, Pete, it's nearly 5 a.m. Well, yeah, because you're, I guess, not halfway across the world, but pretty close. Over on the other side of the pond, as we say, right? What's happening, man? 5 a.m. Thanks for hanging out, dude. I saw you out of the corner of my eye earlier and didn't quite get a chance to say hi to you, but nice to see you, dude. Ron Wayne's got one on his Jeep. Nice, man. Nice. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm reading a couple of chats here. I can't quite read them out loud. There's a few Gretchen fans in here tonight, one or two. Ooh. All right, guys, I've had a lot of fun hanging out with you. I might have missed a few questions. Well, we'll blame all that on Linda if I missed any, so blame her. But not too much, especially if <laughs> if you're emailing her to get a, a sticker or swag otherwise, you know. You go M64 under folder, which is behind me right now. Yes. Oh, boy. You guys are getting more funny by the minute. <laughs> All right, I'm out of here. I had fun hanging out with you guys. I'm going to have a couple gun reviews out soon, actually. There's a couple here that I'm excited to talk about. And if you guys want to see some guns before then, make sure you hang out in my live stream on Locals tomorrow night. It'll probably be about yeah, 10, 10.30 at night, somewhere around there, because I'm probably going to have to work till past dark. But it's only an hour stream, so we'll still be done. A little bit before this time. So I will see some of you guys over there. And yeah, 
I'm glad you had fun, Gort, and I hope the rest of you guys did too. And real quick, it is an original reweld, okay, by Two Rivers. That's the original receiver. When it was cut with a bandsaw, the third pinholes were welded first. That's the key. Then it was rewelded to conform to semi auto. And that is the original receiver, dude. Like everything is completely original on there, okay? So I promise I can't touch it right now. And I know that's pretty hard to find. Talk about bucket list guns. That's a bucket list gun back there, but I already have it. So I couldn't count it earlier, but. I feel very lucky to have owned that, and it does have a functional bolt hold open. One quick, one quick question, one quick diversion here, guys. Then I'm getting off. If you guys are under the AK building where you look at two rivers, they did the build, but Matt Yemens, otherwise known as Turbo, this online, my guns Northwest, two of the biggest legends of all time of building AKs from the ground up. They worked with him. Because he had a way to replicate and get the functional bolt hold open working again, because that always gets cut when they cut the receiver. And the reason why I got such a holy grail M64 that like everything was done perfect on it is because this used to belong to one of the employees at Two Rivers. So nothing was spared because they were building it for himself, right? And he just needed to part with it to liquidate a little bit of the collection. I was lucky enough, right place, right time, to be able to buy it. And I spent a fortune for it back then, but I don't regret it because an original Rewild M64, fully functional, with the provenance of who built it and just everything. Um, yeah. When I go, my wife or daughter will be happy I bought it. I'll just leave it at that. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and have a good one. And I just saw you, Matt Morrison. What's up, dude? Nice to see you, dude.